Yo, 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 welcome to the Director's Den with your boy, I am Eddie Jackson. Alongside me, I got my boy Cheer. in the house. He's what back. up, what up? I'm back, baby. He's back. You know <laughs> this man, Mr. Fly him out. He getting flued out and by artists <laughs> and everything now. I you can't silly, get man. him in here to record nothing. Oh, nah, man. Mr. You know, Kim. What's going on, E? How you feeling, man? I'm good, bro. Yeah, man. Good, we man. we got it's we got our day. got our drinks today. It's a Wednesday night. Hey, got our hey, drinks. Don't say that. It's, it's <laughs> Wednesday. It is, it is a soft Wednesday, and I did uh, put that out there. I know. I know Kim like like his drinks. What is what? what you said? Actually, man, there? this is something I've had, I ain't had in a minute. I, I usually drink dark, but it's just this uh, Amsterdam pink lemonade, man. It's just something I had. Hey, Amsterdam pink lemonade. Yeah, crazy. That looks yeah, it's good. like vodka. It's, it's it's not bad though, man. Looks good. Hey, man, I might have to take keys. Might have to take keys and uh, have everybody's <laughs> keys locked up here. Everybody got to stay the night. I, I can't have that on my conscience. Going to stay, knowing Kim was off that za over here. <laughs> <laughs> you a fool, man. Man, today is a it's a good day, man. Just because, um, one, I mean, we we here, we breathing, but two, you know, it's 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 fire because we we have a really good guest in the house, uh, somebody that. You know, I feel like nowadays is well proclaimed in the city of Columbus for sure. Um, before I bring him on, and we bring him on, I just want to read off his uh, bio. It was uh, it was pretty fire that I found this, and uh, his name is Dom Campbell, and this is straight off his LinkedIn. So we ain't, we ain't <laughs> make this up or nothing like that. Dom Campbell is an American filmmaker who hails from Columbus, Ohio. Growing up, he developed a passion for filmmaking and taught himself the ins and outs of the business. At the start of his career, he focused on producing short films, music videos, achieving success in the independent film space. Building on this success, Dom expanded his business and founded Imperium Studios with the goal of cultivating the inter entertainment culture in Ohio. Through Imperium Studios, Dom is committed to creating high-quality content and providing opportunities for local talent. He's done that very well. Uh, prior to his filmmaking career, Dom attended Fort Hayes uh, Port Performing Arts School where he studied professional theater. This experience sparked his interest in the performing arts and led him to study theater arts at Ohio University. Today, Dom continues to push the boundaries of filmmaking and is dedicated to making a positive impact on the entertainment industry in Ohio and beyond. And before I say anything else, I mean, I, I feel like because I, I've seen the work, I've seen the grind, um, you know, I felt like it was just right to just have him on this show, uh, especially with me and Kim, because Kim is really the reason why I'm connected <laughs> to Dom. And so this show is really special. Help me with a warm... Whatever y'all doing, whatever y'all sipping on, smoking on, hey, hey. Help me bring on Dom Campbell. Man, what's going on, Dom? Much appreciated, much appreciated. LinkedIn said that? LinkedIn. <laughs> like, like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's all true, but whoa, I didn't even know. that. Wow, I'm, I'm LinkedIn impressed. LinkedIn definitely said that, man. I, like, I got it right here. That is amazing. It's right here. So That is amazing. Um, Whoever your uh, whoever the writes these things, or <laughs> if you wrote it, you just forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah either it, it I did good. or my it old was good marketing. enough for me not to rewrite one. Yeah, well, <laughs> that, no, that was amazing. And you know, I want to first say I appreciate you guys for allowing me to come on this uh, podcast. I love what y'all doing, um, and definitely shout out to Kim because believe it or not, a lot of people don't know Kim is the reason why I even built the confidence to even keep this thing going. I think he even. Uh, witnessed, I went through three different companies. I was mm -hmm. like Kingdom Vision, yeah, and then I was Showroom Studios, and <laughs> now it's Superium. So it's all thanks to Kim for even, you know, dedicating his time and his um, his resources, his yeah. equipment to even allow me to shoot these films. So, man, give a big ups to Kim, man, because hey, he's not only done that for me, he's done that for a lot of videographers and photographers and creators out here. So I appreciate man that, man. his flowers, man, up. for sure. I appreciate that. Indeed. Yeah. Appreciate and thank that. you, E. 
you hey, know, man, man you know, you I'm came just... through helping, and we got pictures <laughs> hey, and memories. Man, I'm so. just a crab in a bucket, man, just looking, <laughs> looking for the next project I can leach on to, man. That's, That's up, all man. it was. Yeah. But it definitely formed a, a good relationship and just somebody that I can look up to. You know, I'm everybody know I'm all about growth and just Amen. really just, a lot, you know, having a – Having people that's doing better than you, having people that's doing not 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 good as you, right? Yeah. And being able to groom and be groomed. Yeah. And so yeah. Uh, both of y'all gave me that experience to be able to just see how that was my first time ever being on set. I remember when Kim oh, did show yeah, up one right. day, I was high. I was like, Don was like, hey, so we're gonna have to get this done. <laughs> I was like, oh my God. Yeah, man, there's a lot of... I was like, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. By any means. I notice a lot of people, they'll pick up projects and, you know, they don't touch it again, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's one thing that I've always tried to do, no matter what, by any means. If I wanted Kim to come out to L.A. with me. He couldn't make it or I man. couldn't afford it. It was one of the two. And either way, it was like, yeah, I, was I had him on FaceTime. That. I was like, yo, yep. what's the setting? Yeah, that's right. Yo, that's well, right. How do I do this, man? That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot. My camera keep on like, yeah. what I do. Like. <laughs> yeah, I had to do some technical uh, walkthroughs over the old FaceTime. Geek Squad. Yeah, yeah man. Geek yep. the movie scene. <laughs> yep. He he know how I am with the cameras though. Yeah. I'm a I'm a I'm a geek nerd when it comes to that. So oh, yeah. glad I was able to help out even though I wasn't there, but Oh, yeah. You know, we was able to, to keep and maintain the quality. And that was really, really important. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So I'm going to bring up. Yeah, I'm gonna, so you, you remember our uh, actual. F it wasn't our project, but do you remember the first time we linked up? For fifty thousand dollars. Name the first time when we actually linked up. No. It, I can't, you remember? I can't, man. <laughs> Refresh my memory. All right, so I was I had a video shoot. This is when I was living in Gehenna. Okay. I remember you hit me up. You said, like, I'm, I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up. I was like, all right, cool. I'm gonna wait on you. And uh, you pulled up, and it was it was a, a dude by the name of Kales, Trap Kales. What up, Kales? But um, you came over. You came through. You, you rode with me, and he was shooting with a dude named Jay Mills. Uh, as a, you know, he was the feature. Yeah, it I was, do remember that. And it was kind of in the cut. Yes, like yes, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. And that was the first time we actually landed. I wanted to see if you remember that. But. I do remember that. And Kim had this thing where he, like, salsas with the gimbal. Like, he, <laughs> <laughs> he takes the gimbal Man, and his boy hey. start dancing with it. <laughs> I remember that. That's when I had the Ronin, the Ronin M. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. hey, man, that... Hey, I love that thing, man. I had my I had my own technique then, and so yeah, that's you funny. Tell that man nothing. Hey. Rumba. Hey. <laughs> I think I still have some footage from that, man. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure I do. I got old uh, little hard drive from BTS. I think I shot the BTS to that. You did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I do remember that. Wow, that was a long. Yeah. What was that like 2016? I was about to ask you. I don't. Like that? Maybe so. That's what yeah. I was about right. Yeah. About right. 2016. Yeah, man. Yeah, because sure that was when I started. Trying to shoot music, shoot man. I was watching Kim trying to shoot music. I wasn't even shooting music video. Well, I made yeah, no, no, I I, you was you I was. Did BSC. I did a couple BSC videos, yeah, and then I was uh Damn, looking BSC, at that's crazy, yeah. I know I was looking at Kim and uh Luis, uh, yeah, Digital Matter, yep, at the yep, time. yeah, Shout Digital Matter Media, yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. He and I, see, you know, it's crazy that y'all say all these names because like that's Bizango, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. that's what he is so now, yeah, like these names before I even owned a camera. And I was just that's like crazy. looking. Dang, that see, tastes. Like, dang, that's, that's how long y'all niggas been around. Mm. <laughs> like, if you nuts. really think about it. Like, I hit Kim up. I ain't know Kim. Yeah. I hit him up yeah. to get a drink. All through IG, man, for both of y'all. That's Eight how I years, met y'all. man. That's crazy. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's you, crazy. you really think about it, like, the technology and the way the world is. Y'all really been in the independent filmmaking industry mm -hmm. for a long time. Even if it wasn't long form or short, even if it was just short form, like music videos and stuff like that, yeah. y'all been doing that before it became a thing. Yeah. 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 Talk about, like, that, like, because the one thing that always interests me, especially when I get around, like, people that are, I don't like to use the word better, just seasoned mm -hmm. when it comes down to the craft and the culture of videography, uh, composing, uh, even script writing or anything like that. When, before it was a thing, what was the reason why y'all did it? Like, mm. I, you know what I mean? Because I know why I got into it, 
initially, you know mm. what I mean? My whole reason has changed now, but what was the reason that kind of sparked y'all two to yes, get into okay. that? Uh, so for me, uh, <laughs> it's crazy because I, I had no knowledge of nothing. So I had a little Canon Rebel T3i actually, and uh, it sat on the floor for like six months. Uh, this was before, you know, I was making beats and stuff back then, but I happened, I was making beats, and I looked down, and I, I was like, man, this camera been sitting there. I, mean, I wonder if I can make a video, you know what I'm saying? I, I figured music video, you know, I'm making beats, and a music video go hand in hand with that, so mm -hmm. uh, I picked it up, and it pretty much started from that right, when I had my son, and uh, and I just, you know, tested the waters, and somebody caught wind of it, you know, after doing a few, and... and uh, was it music videos? It was music. That was the first vi thing. I, you know, it, it sucked. Thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and but when I first, when I, I was like, oh, yo, this kind of dope. You know what I'm saying? Right. But I look we back at it now. Oh yeah, definitely. But started. somebody caught wind of it. My his name at the time we went by Luciano. Mm -hmm. You know, you remember Mafia, on the Mafia yeah. now? Yeah. yeah, he was in the in uh, yo, the Hearts. Yeah. What's the movie? Her way. Her way. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. What up, Luch? Yeah. But uh, Mafia. But uh, yeah, he was the first one caught wind of that, and and that's where kind of my career took off because he was like hot in the city then. And so he basically like solicited you to get. Yeah, to yep, yep. I've done some other projects, but but he was the one for real that made everybody in Columbus notice my name at the time. So huh? that's yeah, amazing. that's amazing. How, 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 what about you? For me, man, it's funny enough. It started for me when I was twelve years old. So I told mm. you I'm 31. So just to make this longest story short, when I was 12, I got the opportunity to go on like a um, uh, summer trip to uh, Rice State University. It was a summer program for theater. During that time, another kid had a camera, and we shot this little quirky uh, short film called Fork, where the RA would chase all the students around with a plastic fork, and when he killed them, he would yell out, Fork! <laughs> and it was just really, it wasn't my idea. I just went with it and I edited it. So when I got home from the uh, summer camp, I was 12 years old. I had to download a free editing software program where you had the, the, the logo watermark still on it. Mm. <laughs> and I put it together. So fast forward, when I was in high school, junior year, my mom bought me my first camera. And it wasn't good enough still to do what I wanted to do. But I wrote a story and I connected with some other kids at the, uh, the uh, Fort, we said Fort Hayes. Mm -hmm. So I was in theater. I was always, my background's always been in acting. But uh, when I went to um, Fort Hayes, I connected with this um, filmmaker and another girl, what have you, and we shot something. And that only lasted a day. So <laughs> fast forward, I thought I wanted to be a rapper. And I got out of school uh, and co went to college trying to be a rapper. Got out of college, started raising my family. And I was like, you know what? Acting's not going to work. I need to teach myself how to do what I originally love, mm -hmm. what I did back when I was 12 years old. And, um, you know, I went out and bought my first camera at a pawn shop. And uh, I shot my first music video. And I didn't know what I was doing, but I, I, I studied YouTube University. Mm -hmm. So it was always that self-determination of like you know what this is what i love this is what i want to do mm -hmm. and if no one's going to teach me or if i can't you know we in columbus yeah. ohio yeah. if i can't find anybody to do it <laughs> i'm going to do it myself mm -hmm. so that's where it, that's where it started for me and then you know moving forward i shot my very first short film called the last draw with this man right here mm -hmm. and um it was beautiful because when we did that and it's funny because Kim got sick on one of these uh, days. I think we can bring that <laughs> He got <laughs> sick on one of these sure days. Sure did, like, man. He was like, look, man, you're going to have That's to take the wheel. And I'm like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I had to come to him and just be honest about it because, yeah. yeah, I came through. I party. I don't know what. I did something and I kind of like, oh, man, I'm I'm done. I'm yeah. But I had to let him know. But the next day, we I was we was at it. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I still it. feel and bad about that, And we did some beautiful though. things, too, man. We had the jib. And yep, I think sure that was did. the next day after that. It was, um, yeah. And we were, right now, where we shot at is nothing but apartments. Oh, man. It's, it looks totally different now. now. Yeah, you wouldn't even That's know nuts. where we shot. Um, and then, dude, when, you seen, when we seen the outcome of that, I was like, you know what? There's no looking back. I did another film with Luis, who's, what's his name, Bazano or something Bizango. like that? Bazango. Yeah, 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 Luis. Yeah. Uh, and we did uh, a short film. And then I was like, okay, I like this, 
Mm-hmm. But then I went back with my boy Kim, and we did another project called Project Armageddon. Yeah, and then that. from there, I was like, you know what, Kim, you ready to scale it up a little bit? Mm-hmm. And then we did Bad Business. And then, you know, it just kept on going. But it was the, like, oh, we could do this. Like, this is yeah. a thing, and no one else is doing it. So mm-hmm. that's. Yeah, nobody was, for no, real. No yeah, 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 that's what I said. Like, like he said, like, you got the staple in Columbus right now. For, yeah. for the, sh- the movies in here. And we hit the wave because now, like, now that we're doing this Tubi stuff, Tubi's becoming oversaturated. Like, everyone, every time you turn around, everyone got a movie on Tubi or coming out on Tubi. But when we did The Female Hustler, shout out to my boy Kim again, <laughs> you, you know, at that point, no one really had films on Tubi yet. And that's why our film kind of, like, cracked the cement in a way because it was that thing of no one was doing it. And I, and I honestly believe because of that film, and some of the other things we've done, <coughs> now people f- gained that confidence that, oh, yeah, yeah, we can shoot right. films, too. too yeah, because people yeah. was blowing Kim up after that. Hey, I got a film idea. I got a film right. idea. And it was like, yeah. And we all know everybody that got a film idea don't have a film idea. Yeah, so so here's the thing. With her, he, so he when he mentioned that, like, it was cool to, you know, experience, you know, and maybe, you know, do some films with other directors in – it was cool, you know. I got to learn how they move about, but I will say, I I got a little spoiled because I, I felt I liked the way. He, I don't know if I should say this, but I felt like I liked the way he worked better because we had more of a connection then. It was that chemistry. Yeah. So. So you just piss off by saying. I know. Uh, maybe <laughs> edit. That, but, Cut that but, out. But no. but no, nah, that's the truth though, man. Because you, you know, this is some people that you can work with. And and some people that you came like oh he don't have his stuff together especially here in the city you know so for sure shout out to Don for that you know yeah, what I'm saying and that. uh and I know uh like we have worked there in a minute you know what I'm saying of course you know with every relationship you have a you have your ups and downs you know what I'm saying Always. so so you know uh we didn't get to work on other future projects but you know but the ones that we did it was you know we made a a footprint in you know that during you know during that time so so yeah absolutely absolutely man and to kind of piggyback off what you're saying man i'm not the easiest person to work with you know sometimes i (laughs) i can be very (laughs) emotional yeah 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 yeah. yeah. it it drives from passion a lot of it is passion and i and you know in in maturity and i think as you grow if you love it you will start to kind of start talking to yourself and say hold on what is it you or is it them you know because mm-hmm. after kim i've worked with a few other people and you know it get t- it gets to times where i'm like you know what and and i have to check myself you know and that's for anybody i think no matter what field you in if you love what you do and you love the people you work with sometimes you have to check yourself and what i'm learning more recently is shift it's called relate to to maintain a relationship you sometimes have to focus on the relation shift people change the Mm -hmm. world change Mm -hmm. and you have to shift yourself in order to be able to uh what you say compromise or to be because it's like any relationship you know like if you're married things go up and down all the time and you know people change and you just if you love them if you want to be with them you got to shift yourself in order to align with who this person is so and i think now i didn't know that then but now, and, and even though me and Kim haven't talked in a few years, it has never been anything like, oh, I hate you or, you know, F your mom and F everything. No, it was like, mm-hmm. you know what? I think we love each other too much. Let's just take a uh, let's take a step back. My boy Rick Ross, mm-hmm. I love Rick Ross. He say, instead of beefing with your homie, give him some distance, you know, and mm-hmm. that's you really what it be sometimes. <coughs> and even to my best friend sometimes, you know, I got to give people distance. So, you yeah. know, we live in a world where, like, that is not really heard of. Like, mm-hmm. people don't do that. They, like, people love hard. Yeah. And when you, like, crush their love, they either go all off on you. Yeah. Or th- it's not even distance at this point. It's like you don't exist, right? Yeah. And you don't exist and distance is two different things. Cause <laughs> you can love somebody from afar. Amen. Mm-hmm. But sometimes people will just, you know, <coughs> there's just certain relationships you just got cut. Yeah. And, like, sever. Absolutely. And, you know, when you really think about that, when you think about that in mind, you've had to work with a lot of people, mm-hmm. a lot of different personalities, talents. How do you manage that from a just 
from the boss's perspective, you know, like as as the person that's overseeing the project, obviously you have other people that's in line that can handle certain roles and different things and there's trust there. Mm-hmm. But how do you deal with all the personalities? Because the reason why we're so emotional is because it be our baby. Yeah. And at the oh end yeah. of the day, that still has to be recognized by people that's on set. That's been the toughest thing, E. I promise, man. I <clears throat> I think in the last you know, five years I worked over worked with over three hundred different people from below the line to the above the line talent. Mm-hmm. And just this last project we did, it was ninety people on that project contact list. And I was in a unique position because I played the first A D, first assistant director, and I didn't wanna be. You know, I was the executive producer. So you, like you said, as a boss you got that chain of command mm-hmm. and as an executive producer you could sit back and just manage the entire set your relationships with everyone truly don't matter because you guys all got hired, you all got a job to do, your job is not to be friends with me, right? But as a first AD, you kind of actually have to maintain a certain relationship with your crew so they can respect you, so everything can be on time (laughs) and things can be ran efficiently. and, and, And that is a tough job to do. Uh, A couple projects back, I. (laughs) <laughs> two projects in a row, I had to fire the first AD, like the first week of filming. And it was un- very, very unfortunate, but it was necessary because mm-hmm. it's all about energy, right? right? So when you go into a set, I expect everybody to have some type of level of positive energy and creative energy. What's going to move this project forward? Mm-hmm. And I believe that, well, in these particular situations, they didn't. They they failed that. So I wanted to let them go. And I think people respected that more than anything because who if you're working 10 to 12 hours a day on a mm-hmm. set, you don't want to be down. You don't want to be low and stuff. So, you know, I walk into every production just, you know, hey, let's do it. Let's work. Positive energy. You hungry. You want a snack. You know, whatever the case may be. Um, so to kind of like answer your question in a way, how do you maintain it? You got, You have to understand. You have to understand that everyone is different. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that everyone's personality is going to be different, and you have to match that. So if some people are not very, uh, what what do you call it, introverts and extroverts, Mm -hmm. right? So some people are introverts. Those introverts, you got to kind of do things to make them laugh. I always try to adapt to my crew and try to learn them ahead of time and say, oh, you're a person that want to laugh. So I'm a little little things to kind of get a smile on your face. And, and mm-hmm. then for my extroverts, I have to kind of match their energy sometime or kind of bring them in and kind of like educate. But I think people respect me just because I'm always giving game. Every time I'm on set, I'm giving game and I'm, uh, and I'm driven to the purpose of what we're here for. And um, you don't see that a lot in people. Mm-hmm. So... Um, maintaining relationships, it, just, it, it varies, but I think at the end of the day, the bottom line is just remember what you're doing it for. What, like, what are you, okay, let's rewind that. The bottom line is, what are you here for? Why are you doing it? And who are you doing it for? Mm-hmm. And if you remember those W's, I feel like at the end of the day, you know, everything should maybe, you know, flow. You know, what you put in this? What you put in this line, <laughs> I'm like, I can't even <laughs> articulate my words the right way, man. But everything should. That's the <laughs> everything. pineapple. That's that Stella, boy. Yeah, you, know you got man? some stuff. I'm over here like, boy, I feel like Tyler Perry in his interview with T.I. Like, Tyler was, <laughs> Tyler was sweating and he couldn't get his words right. I'm like, boy, but they put it in his line. But uh-huh. no. <laughs> hey, like, it's yeah. T.I. too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But no, man, just, when, yeah, go when ahead. When did you get to a point to where you had to shift from or I need people to be a part of what I got going on for free Mm -hmm. to it's time to start paying people like what what makes that shift happen um you know is it more money is it to be deal is it you know I mean like is it a combination of things yeah it is a combination of things man uh to this day some people work on my set for free uh but it's not really free is for opportunity it's not right. monetary exchange it's more for a notoriety exchange because at the end of the day we have been in a position to be able to you know provide distribution so if you've never done this before and you have a passion for it when you come work with us you're going to know that you're going to get that exposure you know millions and millions of people have seen our films i think that alone is a good start for certain people especially being in columbus 
Now, for the people who are experienced, who are bringing gear, who is bringing set, I kind of wish I could bring Kim on to some of the, you know, uh, or you on some of the deal, because you guys got the equipment. You got you guys got things that are worth monetary value. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think the shift happens when you realize what someone is bringing to the table, and then it also happens when you realize or when you actually can have the money to afford that as well, you know, right. because man, at a point of time, I think for bad business, I was Ubering and I was, uh, and bad business is like my first short film slash biggest big film. But, um, I was Ubering and I was working at dish network. So I'm like, look, Hey bro, I can I pay you a hundred a week or mm -hmm. can I, Hey, I, I'll have this then, but I always tried to like, you know, make, make a do of my word and, and do that. But now it's to the point where it's like, uh, we've been fortunate. My business partner now, he's my vice president um, of the management company of Imperium. And he was my first person to give me 40,000 for a temporary suspicion. So he gave me 40,000. I was down bad. I was in a, a really low spot. Uh, Female Hustler was streaming at the time, but I, I, I wasn't going to see that money for about six months. So, I was like, look, man, I made this on uh, temporary suspicion, not temporary. I made this money on female hustler, but I won't see it until next year. And um, I got this good idea and I, all I need is 40,000. That man dropped that money in my bank account like three, four days later. But I came correct. You know, I, I, I told him who I wanted a part of it. I had a script. I had everything organized and, and, and laid out where giving me 40,000 was a no brainer for him. And now I was able to, <coughs> at that point, I was able to fund it. He made it a solid investment. He made a solid investment, and he made his money back. So at that point, he was so able to, hey, um, I got, you know, he was able to make a couple of phone calls to some mm -hmm. other people to say, you know, um, I, I know this guy who's doing movies, and, you know, it might not be a bad idea to put some money in. And mm -hmm. that took a few films later for that to happen. Because after uh, Temporary Suspicion, the next couple of films was just all Imperium. You know, what we made, like, we didn't, I didn't make no really true money as far as, like, pocketing mm -hmm. off of any of my films. I took all my money I made from my films and put it into the next mm -hmm. film. And then I put it into the next film, you know. And then, you know, just recently we had our most expensive film, which is Affliction, Toxic Misery. Mm -hmm. Check that out. But anyway, yeah, check, uh, <laughs> check, check out Toxic. I watched yeah. it. I was over, I was over yeah. there like, yo, Shorty got to get got. <laughs> and we got to talk about a part two to that because she that, got No, nah, don't say got. nothing yet because I haven't seen that. Yeah, yeah. Nah, yeah, check it out. The last check one I've seen was the uh, her, her, her Way. Way. And Her Way didn't do too well. You know, when you talk about financials, I mean, it was my funnest set. Um, I can tell y'all had fun. Oh, we had a blast. Like, Between that and a kid named Bugs. That's my, oh my God. number one thing that I say about her way is <coughs> despite, because we're creative, so we look at things from a creative lens, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which can, not always a good thing, because you just pick stuff apart versus just enjoying it, right? Right. And so <laughs> what I did was I said, you know, when I watch her way, I, I'm just going to enjoy the film. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm going to try my hardest not to look at it from the cinematic piece that I would judge a movie from, right. you know. Right. And when I watched it and I did that, I enjoyed it because it just seemed like, like the part of the cinematic mind that was in my head was like, oh, set was fun. I know this <laughs> they had a ball doing yeah. this. Mm -hmm. Like it was yeah. just all the shots and just the comedy yeah. That came with it. It wasn't just like humor. That I was like, ha ha. Like I actually was laughing. Yeah, yeah. You could tell that was a fun one. Yeah, for you sure. know, and it was fun. you know, I think the people that you picked, uh, Lonnie. Yeah, that yeah. was a really like. Yeah. I felt like if I know, I don't even know Lonnie like that at <laughs> all. So I'm not, I'm not saying I know the man like that, but I do know of people in the city. Yeah. And when you think of a role like that. The only person I can see in the city to play that role is him. Yeah, yeah. Based off of his personality, off of social media, and the things that I do see about him. Yeah. He has that. He just had it. Yes. Every film and that it I came do. out in the film, y'all yeah. did a great job. Thank you, thank you. Every film that I do, I'm always sitting back and I was like, you know what? Whoever the leads are, I gotta handpick them. 
And so everybody you see that leads in the Perium film, I personally handpick. Um, but then everyone else, we try to give the opportunity to audition. Uh, except affliction, you know, we had the, some of the lead roles audition. My, I, you know, I, my wife is constantly in my ear. You need to give other people ch- opportunities. Stop handpicking. I'm like, okay, let me mm-hmm. let me do that, you know. And that's what we did. But Lonnie was a no brainer. It was somebody else that could have, but then now that I think about it, I'm like, no, I couldn't see anybody else playing that role but Lonnie. So yeah, and then you know the drug dealer who uh, Luciano Mafia mm-hmm. played. I'm like. Mafia. Yeah, guy. that was that was the easy one for him <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, you know he, he was like basically playing himself. Yeah, and these guys. I mean, yeah. but that, I was just about to say these personas that they're that they're taking is easy when they actually <coughs> like Ronnie's a, a, a party know, promoter. He's a party yeah, promoter. Yeah, I'll, entrepreneur. I'll never know what, yeah, yeah, he's an entrepreneur who is heavily known in the party world. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing and it for so a like, while too. That fits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and he played and, that and part in the somebody that's solid in the community of Columbus. That if they know that he in the film, they gonna support it. Yeah, you know what I mean yeah. because he already got a following attached. Oh yeah, to what he got going Bankability on. Bankability is <laughs> is so important. When I know people, if you're just now starting out with filmmaking, don't focus on who can bring the most views and numbers to your film. Focus on the art. Focus on the story. Now, once you got that down pat, then focus. If you want to make some money off of it, it's so important to start focusing on. You know, who are bankable elements? Mm -hmm. If you notice, a lot of my films have Detroit stars because Detroit Mm -hmm. indie world is on fire. They are the next, uh, you know, Chicago now is going to be Detroit. You know what I mean? There, You will start seeing studios built in Detroit. Some already are being built uh, on a lower level. Mm -hmm. But that mainstream side of things, we're about to start seeing it. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to start using them and bring fly them into the city to welcome them to our world you know, here in Columbus. <coughs> and bank, so bankability, and then you start thinking about who's in the city who's also bankable, you know. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, for instance, Affliction, we, our lead girl, Courtney Payne, she wasn't really that bankable. She was a bottle girl, bartender working at Living Room. And she auditioned. She was actually the fifth choice out of five, five girls who auditioned. She was the bottom choice, and she stunned us away. And we were like, whoa. So now look at her. She's she you know got a number one movie. Millions of people have seen her. So now she's bankable. So our goal here with Imperium is to say you know what, let's add bankability bankable people, and mix them in, sprinkle them in with some people who are really talented, and hopefully we can break them out to the world. So and I think we've been doing a decent job because Lonnie, even though he had a strong following. Now people know him as, like, mm-hmm. oh, you act too? And yeah. then we threw him into Affliction for a small little scene, and people appreciated that, you know? So, um, yeah, man, it's it's all about bankable people. So that's a message for any uh, any of the listeners is think about bankability after you got the art and the story down. That's, yeah. that's gold. Yeah, that's solid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm looking at a, a kid named Bug, Affliction, Tears for Tasha, Her Way, Female Hustler 1 and 2. So I'm going to ask you, Temporary man, what, which one which Sheesh. one is your actual <coughs> baby? I think you may have touched on it, but. Oh, yeah, my baby, hands down, is Female Hustler. Yeah. That is my baby, man. I love Female Hustlers because Female Hustler is the reason why I'm able to really, truly work for myself to this day. Um, you know, beyond the the f- any financials and or the notoriety, it was just the mere fact of it was the first time we was able to um, put something out where the world could see it. Mm-hmm. We tried it with bad business. We made DVDs. We had a premiere yeah. that sold out. We were hitting the streets. Times were, were different too in, for yeah. bad business. Yeah, yeah, it was. But you know what? Almost with female hustle because it was COVID. We started shooting that during COVID in a way. Or did COVID happen? Yeah, COVID happened, right? Probably after. in the end of the phase kind was of. Was it, I feel like, was it for the second part of it, though? Yeah, because we I think it was like the second, second yeah, because yeah. y'all was, yeah. yeah. I think that was yeah, for the second. there wasn't no COVID during the first Yeah, one. it wasn't. It wasn't, yeah. No, nah, it wasn't. 20, 2019, we started filming it. Yep, yeah, right. in 2020 is when yeah, COVID, COVID actually, happened. Yeah, yeah. And then when, but even then, after that, when we start shooting the second half of it, um, COVID happened because our premiere, 
our premiere for the female hustler only had the first half of it and mm -hmm. um it was unfortunate that you know we weren't able to fill up all the seats that we did with bad business i think we yeah. had a 200 seater for bad business and then when we did the premiere for the female hustler <coughs> it was like only 80 seats or something like that we could do bad business was to me was still fun though i mean yeah. that's the one in the woods yeah that's what we, i love we i would say that's my baby that was kind of showroom studios in a way but yeah yes, different I love, name, but yeah yeah we had fun yeah we, we did because we, we stayed in that. remember because i was hitting you up like hey bro I need to get a part, but I don't yeah. even care the time I owned the Sony. I think I owned the Nikon, and Kim was yeah, yeah, to, man, you yeah, 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 you can't be included. He was trying to tell me like, yeah, man, yeah, man, I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna talk to him, I'm gonna talk to him. No, but I did put y'all together like, eventually, and then though. The so the weekend go by, I'm like, man, you talk to him, like, man, we're done filming, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, I wish I could do that again in a way like where it was like all the crew and cast we stayed in the same building for, I mean, the same yeah. house for like two, three days. Yeah. We yeah. Scared about coyotes and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, "What was this?" Thing? We was in my eyes were spooky. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah we, we, we went to Logan, Ohio. That was cool, man. Because we, yeah, we stayed in the cabin, like you said. We ain't, we didn't leave either. We had we had all the food. Well, y'all brought all the food, yeah. groceries and stuff. We made breakfast. You know, yeah. what I'm saying all that. And see, that's different cool. now because now I wish I had. It was like that. You know, we probably had some food stamps or some around that time. Now we got to spend <laughs> money on yeah. food. And I tell yeah, you what, no crew is. And they always yeah. hungry. Every time always. I turn around, somebody snacking on something. They're like I'm like, mechanics, hey. bro. Man, it's mechanics so crazy. Is that's why it's best to just go ahead and get you a vending machine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so my I'm other baby put some quarters in. I'm yeah, sad. that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do for real, man. Kind of. <laughs> hey, y'all got to contribute too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I hey, use that. Yeah, yeah use that. Cents. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> if yeah. you want it, how bad do you want it? Um, but my other baby, I would say, is a kid named Bug, man. So shout out to my son, DJ Campbell. He's on the rise. He's 10 years old. Shout out, DJ. He's actually here. Yeah, yeah. He's he, he a little bit too famous to get yeah. on camera, but <laughs> it's all good. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was a part of Female Hustler, the very first, the second part of the first one. Okay. And um, at, he was seven years old at that time, and he, he had a small scene. I don't even know if he had any lines. Maybe he had one or a head nod, but he came in. I mean, he was around people from the hood, people who had corporate jobs. He was around like twenty of us, and he just maintained it, this professional, this professionalism uh, that people just was commended. They were like, "That was your son. That was your son." That's, that's called your son act right. Yeah, yeah, in public. <laughs> yeah, and, well, and we all, as God. all parents, <laughs> get uh, super happy. Be like. But it always seemed like your kids act right with somebody else. But then when they come home. <laughs> when they come yeah, home. Different story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't know my kids. I'm trying to tell you. You yeah. really Facts. don't know them. Facts. <laughs> um, but you know what? It was a car ride home that I said, you know what? People loved you today, son. Mm -hmm. What you think about really doing this? Because when we did Bad Business, I don't know if you remember, Kim, he was supposed to be the kid that ran to Warren and Autumn, and he was crying. Yeah, he couldn't do it, so that. I had to get that's my right. daughter to yeah, do it last yeah, minute. Right. So my wife is doing her hair real fast, because I've been trying to get this boy into acting, but he just couldn't do it. Uh, and then we had that ride home after Female Hustler, and I said, man, if you really want to do this, I got you. So from that moment, we uh, we, haven't, we haven't looked back. We did Kid Named Bug, and... Now he's signed to a Hollywood agency, and he's been doing multiple auditions. So, uh, he, you know, so that's I gotta cool. say that's my baby that's in a way up. because yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. he's yeah yeah he's I on see, the rise. I haven't, so I've seen the stuff um, like that you've put out about a kid named Bug. Yeah. Um, where can anybody find that? You know, as far as like just episodes, or is yeah. it still in production? Yeah, a kid named Bug dot com currently has both season one and season two. Okay, it. so there's seasons. Yeah, yeah, season one, season two. Each one is like five episodes, uh, five minutes or four minutes. Some it varies. Uh, in the last episode of season two, we uh, we transformed him into an animation. So like him and two other stars, they're they're cartoon characters. And so we've been kind of stuck on that, like, you know, do we do another season? And, you know, because animation is expensive, mm. man. Yeah. We, I mean, do you know that to do an animation, <coughs> for one minute of animation, is $7,000? Oh. Mm. 7000 I mean, on an average, yeah, you know. yeah. five to 7000 Yeah. I'm Ain't that crazy? <laughs> I, mean, I, I studied mm. the wrong things on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, because you think about it, you like, whoa, well, that might not be bad to kind of. So that's one thing we've been stuck on. And so that little segment and the end of um, A Kid Named Bug was only 10 seconds. So. <laughs> 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 I'm like, hey, how much for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> so what can I get for yeah, 10, yeah. 15 yeah, seconds? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. That's so, like yeah. 
seven hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was a few thousand still. So I was just like, yeah. well, I mean, it'll be worth it. And so, um, so we start we start kind of budgeting out what it would be if we did like a whole season of it, and it's like twenty five thousand dollars. With no guarantee of how you can make the money back. back yeah. So it's kind of like, oh, mm. I don't know if we can do that, man. Mm. So we'll, we'll hopefully, I mean, we got a whole story Bible and we got episodes written out and we got mm. so many things prepared for it that hopefully we could pitch it and, you know, someone else will finance it and, and pick it up and like a mainstream, like yeah. Warner Brothers or Netflix or something like that. Yeah, I hopefully. mean, it, it fits right in. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's on. what I'm trying to do, something different. You know, everybody's doing Tubi. And, you know, like Tears for Tasha uh, is currently being pitched to, like, BET and, and Stars and Urban Flicks and some other things. Because we're like, you know what? Everyone's on Tubi. How can we be different, you know? And so, uh, but and y'all killing Tubi, though. Man. Yeah, that's what they're I was about well to say. Like, Tubi. if y'all doing good on Tubi, then. Why break that? Right. Well, I mean, and then I mean, but you could you could still venture out, but if Tubi is gonna bring you, you know, maybe the money or you yeah. know the more you know people to look at you at the at, at the movies, then I mean, why not keep at it? You know what I'm saying? But right, I mean, that's smart, and that's why, like I told y'all earlier, you know, I'm pretty much by myself on the day to day. You know, mm-hmm. when it comes to a film, we'll have anyone from. Anywhere from 50 to 90 people working on set, you know, over the the course of two weeks, but or two to three weeks. Um, But, you know, on a day to day basis, I'm by myself. So these are things that I battle with is like, yo, you know, like right now, you know, currently Affliction is doing well. Um, Tears for Tasha is still being pitched. Those are our last two projects we've done. And it's kind of like, man, what do we do next? You know, it was like, do you do a repeat? Do you, you know, everybody say comedy, but like her way was our only comedy and it didn't do too well, you know, to a point where like I'm <coughs> I'm motivated to do another comedy. You know what I mean? So it's kind of mm-hmm. like, what do we do where it could work on Tubi? Because Tubi has changed a lot. Not everyone could get their stuff on Tubi anymore. Mm. Um, and that happened in the last like six months because of the change of CEO. Uh, and their whole like management staff has changed in fact, <laughs> if you go to 2B now, their logo has changed, their color scheme has changed, their phrase has changed. So they're shaking it up, and you know it's going to be a little harder to get films on there, indie films. However, they will not decline black films because majority of their viewership is, is. black people. Mm-hmm. So man, it, so how did how how does 2B finally regulate bad film versus good film because I, I see it. a lot of. I get it. I know it's low budget. Is great. But, yeah. I love that we create a yeah, platform yeah. for our people and this and that. But we cannot put a subpar standard yeah. on the film industry. Yeah, I agree. They don't do that in no other genre. Yeah. But when it comes down to black films, yeah, that's the only reason why only black folk watching it. Right. It's because it's not hitting. It's not. It's not it. HBO not gonna pick it up. Right. Star is not gonna pick it up. Why? Because. Y'all, we're like we're slowly creating this funnel. Yeah, and I haven't even submitted a movie on Tubi yet. But heck, the day I'm about to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> like, next two, three years, you never yeah. know. Yeah, like we created this atmosphere, and I feel like we do this in a lot of sectors. Yeah, big of big. the creative space, music videos, they, all these different things, and we, it's okay because my people like it. Yeah. That don't sell. That don't. That don't change generations. For as far as your family, as far as your so notoriety and your wealth. I'm a. I'm a chime in on that part. Um. I feel like okay, what you're saying to me, we have to uh, think outside the box. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we have to do something out of our norm instead of doing the same old. So like. Tubi is is cool, you know. It's a good platform, is you know, to put your stuff on. But you have, if you want to somewhat succeed, I feel like you have to somewhat think outside that box. Maybe you know you want to do something a little bit different than than the norm. So like even with music videos, everybody wants to do something that's that everybody else is doing. Right. You know, mm-hmm. the movies now. This is where you get to. Put out what you really want to do. You can, you know, like, okay, well, I've been wanting to do this. Let's do this in a movie, you know what I'm saying, instead of a music video, you know what I'm saying? Just 
I, now I know there's a lot of movies out there, but I think it's gonna take that one person like, oh, okay, I see what he did here. You know what I'm saying? Be, but all, these, these movies ain't different in no special way. These movies is horrible. Mm. Like, okay, horrible. I agree. I agree. Like, I agree. Tyler but Perry and I love Tyler Perry. <laughs> Hope to meet him one day. Tyler, don't take this too type of way. <laughs> but when he had the movie and the girl was drinking out of a cup. Empty cup, you know what I mean, and that yeah. like that type of miss, like that, but like the whole movie, yeah, I don't even know what is movie all that of is, that. And what, you see, and I, I feel movie. like Tubi tight, Tubi gonna tighten up because at the end of the day, when you're trying to be a platform like Netflix, like Stars, like HBO, yeah. like all these people that's been around for years and years, you trying to stay on that level. To be can, but they gonna have to tighten up their guidelines and, and they will. They will. On, like you Which can't is, just submit anything are. on that. Yeah, way. yeah, this is like he said. It, yeah. Things are changing. I mean, this, everything starts from something. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you and know, I, I think they was tired of getting that like uh, that slang of that's another to be movie. Mm. Oh, that's a to be movie. And yeah, they started like going they, viral of like people shooting and then you know the effects happening later than what it is and it's yeah. just like a you could tell it was some drone uh <laughs> downloaded from youtube on them and yeah. or it'll be like a whole character change like you you know we're filming towards kim and then kim's talking to me but then we go back to kim it's a whole nother person that's light-skinned with a different mm. hat on it's like yo so and tubi was allowing that so they're kind of cutting away which they should. I'm glad. I mean, yeah, like they, they, yeah, they yeah. got you. Because <laughs> this <laughs> bitch, I'll be like, what the like, fuck? I actually like you know to be. Like, I think they are on their way yeah. to being they, I a think great I, platform. And yeah. you got a great body of... Uh, yeah. If one man like Tyler Perry can be as good as he is, and after I watched his documentary, man. and I found out, yeah. real talk, like, I mean, now Tyler Perry probably hit the masses. Yeah. But for a long part of his career... He was only talking to black folk. That yeah. means we we worth something. Yeah, we we hold Absolutely. value. So I'm not saying he that, still is. I'm not saying that making it? stuff yeah. for our people is a bad thing because we can hold that down. But man, our people wishy washy. Yeah, they can be, and they're and they're and they everyone's a critic now. Yeah. So you know, you drop a movie on Tubi. There's Tubi groups, and you got Reddit, you got Twitter, and people will. I mean, drag your film in the mud, man. And, you know, especially if it's horrible. I mean, even if it's good sometimes, they still will drag it in the mud. I mean, I got a film. Why? I'm not going to mention which just, one. Just to, just, just to, <laughs> just to, just to drag it? I think it's for clickbait. I think mm -hmm. it's to go viral. Mm -hmm. I think to get noticed, followings, you know, just some people be bored. So I think that's mainly oh, what no, it I is. I feel like that can sometimes help you out, too, because if they're oh, talking yeah. about it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I, I was watching this marketing video before I got over here, and she was talking about uh, earned impressions. And so you got owned impressions, which is like organic following, like our core people. Then you got earned impressions, which are people actually talking about it, you know, on their own. And then you have... Um, paid impressions where you actually pay for ads you pay for billboards you pay for these things so these are all three different ways to actually market or advertise and um you know i think that when someone's talking about your film good or bad it's yeah i clicked on it y'all watched it thank you right yeah <laughs> just like face. i'm, I'm <laughs> a, just like for an example so i'm i'm a big nwa fan so like when they dropped that movie straight out of compton and they bought all them cds and they was just you know what i'm saying Stepping fucking them up them. you know what yeah, i'm saying like yeah, yeah. You know, they still getting that right. publicity. You know right. what I'm saying? Pay for it. <laughs> yeah, they pay, exactly. You know what I'm saying? So Right. It's yours anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But, yeah. So, but to like, you know, to your, uh, to kind of like, you know, circle back to what you were saying about, you know, with like the quality and what Tubi's going to accept and what they're not, I think it's just a matter of, you know, as long as you have a good story. I don't think they're judging it based off of the story. I think they're judging it on the quality of the film quality of the audio mm -hmm. and then maybe quality of the effects that you may use within it you know yeah so, so that's that was thought. my thought on that too with anything i mean people who know me know i'm 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 all about quality so yeah so when i'm watching if i'm watching a tubi movie my first thing is i'm gonna look at is is the quality and the audio yeah you know what i'm saying the story may be good yeah. you know what i'm saying but if that quality to at least to me if that quality is like ah Mm -hmm. I'm about to just stop it, man. Yeah, you know I what I'm saying? Get through it. Y yeah, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? So that's my thing, you know. And, and I feel like with me, you know, so I feel like that's where I kind of shine at because I'm all about quality. So yeah. 
if I'm putting on Tubi, I feel like they they're gonna pick it up. Like, oh, okay, this quality somewhat decent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I feel like quality to me is first. <laughs> quality, audio, everything, color grade. You know, he know that about yeah. me. You know, so I think they will pick that up from there. But now, if if it's on some, you know. And shit looking like 720p, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm cutting it off. You know, I'm, I'm surprised they even, you know, accepted it. But it sounds like they're, to me, they might go up to, like, how Stars is Eventually. in a sense. Netflix, you know what I'm yeah, saying? man. Because if you think about it, man, back in, like, 2017, Netflix was accepting black films. If you had the right aggregator or the right connection, it's like 2016, 17, you could get your film on Netflix. It was like a thing. And, I mean, there was people around town. I don't know necessarily in Columbus, but in Ohio for sure, where they were aggregators. If anyone don't know, an aggregator is someone who will broker your film to a network or a platform. They were around here, you know, somewhere. And it was so hard. And at that time, we had bad business. So I'm like, man, I got to find somebody. Maybe we can get on Netflix. Then you're looking at the specs. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't know if we could. We didn't meet We didn't meet these specs that they wanted, you know. So yeah uh, eventually to be will what, yeah. in the next two three years you'll see to be yep. a little bit more present mm-hmm. in it even now what they're doing if you notice they got a lot of to be originals so mm-hmm. what's happening mm-hmm. is they'll give you x amount of dollars up front to basically you know for you to f- shoot the film and then they'll maintain the rights to it which is a good thing in a way because you know they're going to push for it to be number one. So as a filmmaker, it will look good for notoriety mm-hmm. purposes. But like if you're th- if you're looking at it from a business standpoint, it's not good because they only gave you a hundred thousand dollars for that film, and they keep it forever. You don't own it anymore, and you mm-hmm. just shot it. Whereas maybe you could shoot a film on your own and submit it through a distribution company or aggregator, and there's no cap on it. And now you can have your film on Tubi for like two, three years, and you can surpass a hundred thousand. Maybe you know if it's good enough, and if it get the right publicity and people like it. Um, but you know why would you do that? I mean, and again, it just depends on you know. I know a guy up in Youngstown or Cleveland who just did that, and I'm in my head thinking like, how do you get a Tubi original? And I'm, I'm kind of like, and I'm like four films in at this point. Right. I'm like, what? His first film, he get a Tubi. And then I start studying and researching and understanding. Like, Oh, okay. I don't want that. You know, maybe for a certain particular it's film. What you do it for. Yeah, you exactly. I mean? Yeah, yeah. So for some films, yeah. Like right now, I'm thinking about like, man, it would be cool. Like right, like literally right now, that I don't, you know, I could raise money, which we are raising money for a series, uh, which is a lot more expensive. It's like our highest, highest budget project to date, um, and that's a whole nother story. But from a, on a film side, I'm like, man, I need to figure out how I could do a Tubi original mm-hmm. because I don't know if I want to raise the money for, you know, this next film or not. I'd rather them just give me the money. Y'all can keep and that, then, you yeah. know? So it just yeah. depends. Maybe, like maybe it could be, no, nah, I won't say that because any film that you do, you don't want it to be a throwaway film. Cause I could say maybe you could do like a something to be like a throwaway film. In a way. You, you know, know it saying? depends on who, you know, again, what you're saying, what you're doing it for. So if someone comes to me and say, hey, you know, <laughs> Dom, I want you to produce this film, um, you know, depending on the film and what it's worth and, you know, the value, if it aligns with Imperium all the way, I might say, you know what, we'll raise the funds for this because this aligns with what we're doing, mm-hmm. our target audience and everything. If you notice, all of our films, minus um, A Kid Named Bug, which is a, se- a web series, but all of our feature films mm-hmm. has a target audience, black women. And, you know, I had a marketing director working for me at a point in time, and she was doing our analytics on our Imperium Instagram page, and she was like, a lot of your fans are all male. And I'm like, it's because people, they're filmmakers, you know, those people who are interested in film or they're rappers and stuff like that. And that page has been changed multiple times throughout the course of a few years. So now when I did my analytics at the end of 2023, it's mainly women. 18 to 35, black women at that. So I was like, hmm, we did it. You know, in the in course of a couple of years of actually focusing on our niche audience, we were able to say, you know what, this is who we're driving to. So if you came to me with a horror film that's zombie apocalyptic and it got some white people that starring <laughs> in it, you know what I mean? I'm like, it won't be a throwaway film, but it'll be like, let's that's see if Tubi can get this yeah, for a Tubi original. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? It doesn't yeah, align yeah, with yeah. what we got going on. Per se, um, yeah, I, this is one I'd be willing to shoot and give away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And but, not care about it. But with that being said, like my my business partner and I, we've been talking. He's like, you know what? We need to start focusing on content that resonates globally if we plan on scale. Uh, so you know that's what we're doing now. Is like, you know, how can we 
diversify our cast a little bit. We'll still focus on our audience that has, you know, grown confidence uh, with us. But if we can focus on content that resonates with, like, we can submit to a film festival in Cannes or Sundance or something like that, then that's what we're going to try to do. But that stuff is hard, you know, and it, and it, it takes, <coughs> some, it takes some dedication. Getting in festivals is tough, man. Yeah. Not only do you got to pay, and it's not even a lot of times the money, like, because it ain't, like, crazy expensive. They don't want to accept it. It's weird, it's man. I've tried to accept it. picky. They're so picky, man. And a lot of time it's political. You know, it's about who you know, if you know somebody on the advisory board or something. Because even I tried to submit some things to Columbus. For, you know what's so weird, man? We've probably poured over six figures in the course of, like, three years into the Columbus community, whether it was talent or whether it was crew. They don't show no respect here, like, to the black community. Because I don't know why. That's But what, I, what I've known is, like, grants. I, I applied for grants. Mm -hmm turned down i submitted it to festivals turned down you know it's like and you what, got what? full movies this, and, this and no thing. one's doing it right it's no, i mean on our scale at least so it's like if we're not even shoot we, none of our films have been over a hundred thousand no film everything that we we maintained it all under a hundred thousand for business purposes mm -hmm. um but and everyone's trying but and we still don't get that recognition is what i'm trying to get to is like why 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 you why? mean from the city from the city, okay. man, the city, the communicate. Yeah, because most of our viewership is in Detroit. And um, should I continue? Yeah, most of our viewership is uh, from Detroit and Atlanta and Texas, California, uh, Tennessee, all southern states, man. And, you know, yeah, we got a lot of people in Ohio, but they don't catch they only catch wind to it after the world has like oh this is a thing or they've seen a few people in the city resharing it and mm -hmm. then the city jumps on you know so yeah. it's like huh, it's so weird because it goes beyond it goes beyond the the uh the actual art community who could be supporting us it sometimes goes even down to our backyard you know that our, our black folks the people who you would think would be praising what we're doing mm -hmm. No, we don't even get the love like that, man, and it's kind of disappointing. Yeah, no, nah, I, I get it, but I mean, with with anything, though, I feel like that's just the norm. I mean, I, yeah. if you keep plugging at it, I mean, from I just feel like the Columbus ain't the market for it. It's not, but it's, it's, it's like a hard market to crack when it comes down to film. It is. We're known as a creative city. We're known as one of the. Creative cities, but I think it's you know gonna. I think it's gonna. I think that's gonna change, though, man. Yeah. I, I have a good feeling that it is gonna change. I mean, I mean, you're not gonna blow overnight, you know. That's with anything, right? But from me, you know, just from the outside looking in, I feel like what you're doing, people are seeing it. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm not one to really. Uh, I'm trying to say. I try to keep, you know, a, a loop, you know, on what's going on in the city. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Now, I've seen other people try to do stuff. I'm like, ah, you know, but what you're putting out is is good stuff. Yeah. So I'm pretty difficult when I'm when I watch a movie, I'm always like Mm, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? So, but if the story, you know what I'm saying? Like, your, your stuff is, is there, man. So you just, you just have to keep going. Keep on punching. Just keep, keep going cause, because <laughs> I'm pretty picky. You know what I'm saying? So. We know. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm, if I'm watching it, <laughs> if I'm watching it, if it's giving, I'm taking the time out to watch it. That means something. So Some, yes. So I mean, I'm not saying I'm 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 not I'm a nobody. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm watching it, somebody else is watching it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm the pickiest motherfucker out there. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> you know I know it's easier, yeah. but you know. So it's like okay, if somebody else other than myself is watching, it, you in there? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like I I can't I can't think of too many directors here. You know what I'm saying? I, oh, mean, I mean, I know we have a few. Yeah, yeah. We got quite a few, but there's some really talented people. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I watched one. Uh, my man Watts. 
What was the name degrees. of that? Zero, Zero degrees, degrees, man. What up, Watch, man? Yeah. I like that. I like good that joint, story. man. That was a real good story. Really good story. Real good story. I watched it with my man Sauce. We sat there. We, you know, we saying we was we was watching it. And we was like, okay, this is yeah, this is this is a real good story, man. This is real good. And even the audio was good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay, they they got something. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, just keep at it. Yeah. And something's gonna something's gonna shake. I was talking That's to the director of that uh of that movie, the one who created it, uh Troy. Yeah, and, yeah, his boy, yeah, 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 yeah. And he um, you know, he was like, you know, we didn't want it, you know, this was this wasn't I don't wanna make movies. I just want I had a story and I wanted to do it. Um and I think he was saying that to a point of thinking I was like looking at it with judgment. I'm like, Yeah, it was some technical improvement, but we we mm. all start somewhere. Yeah, I remember yep, yep, my yeah. first I, I don't know how many films that was like, uh, I mean, after the bad business premiere, we like, okay, I got to go back home mm-hmm. and kind of update some stuff, you know, because yeah. we have to enhance that. Like, we had yep. a part with the leaves cracking. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, <laughs> God. I was about to read it. Yeah, yeah. Do those ways over. Yeah, over. yeah. But that's, you know, that's, how you, that's how you learn, though, man. I yeah. mean, that's with anything, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so. man, I'm going to keep on going. And, that, you know, to kind of, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep on going. Because you, each film, you, you learn from each film. You know, you take it right before we started this, we were like, you know, I'm taking it one film at a time, you know. So, you know, even with um, Affliction, I think it's my best production to date. And it's weird because it came out, at, it's coming out, it came out before Tears for Tasha, but we shot Tears for Tasha before Affliction. Yeah. So, um, but uh, Affliction, there's still minor things like editing. I'm like, there's a, the the barn doors of a light in the in the door, you won't be able to see it because I kind of scaled in just a tad bit. Uh, but uh, it's stuff like that. Or there was a scene at the nail shop where you see the grip truck, la- the ramp in the background with a cone. I'm like, in my head thinking like, so there is still to this day minor things that happen that you just can't, you know, you will learn and look for. So, you know, having a script supervisor, people. Mm-hmm. people, yes. And it, two things, a script supervisor on set, to learn to say, okay, continuity, that's not okay. So, like, how can we create the budget to make sure we can afford that on set? But then having those focus groups, right? So, like, when you have, like, even, like, you you guys, like, you know, now that I'm, like, you know, connected with you guys again, you know, a film of mine, we'll say, hey, Cave, can we throw, you, throw it on your TV down here? And we'll sit here and we'll watch it together and y'all can maybe look for technical yeah. things to be like, okay. Yeah, I'm going to catch that. Yeah, you know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? <laughs> so we like can, like, improve that. of having other eyes. Yes. Yeah. Look for you. Yes. Like your yeah. eyes ain't gonna catch everything. Not gonna everything. catch everything. That's what yeah. I haven't looked at. Yeah, cause you doing this, you this, 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 this. Have it looked over. Yeah. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> I'm bad with words. People always, still to this day, correct me. Like you know, you spell this wrong. I'm like, yeah. Oh, I, yeah. God. Yeah. That's always been a thing with you. Always yeah, been yeah, a thing yeah, with yeah. me to this day because I do all my editing still. You know. I was, I was gonna ask that. Who's doing the editing? Yes. I'm. I'm. Are I'm, you still? I'm editing everything. Um, writing everything. So, Female Hustler 1 and 2 and Temporary Suspicion, I wrote, directed, and then did everything else on the post-production side of it. Right. Uh, but then Her Way, um, right. Tears right. for Tasha, and Tone. Affliction uh, was not... Yeah, exactly. Tone, shout out my boy uh, Antonio Davis. Uh, Antonio, I brought... He graduated from a school for film, and he came on one of my sets for a kid named Bug. And he was working with us at no cost he's like just wanted the experience and then i'm like all right man well you actually a hard worker you want to come help me on this other film i'm about to shoot and i paid him little to nothing for that film um and then i was like man you really dedicated you want to direct the film you know so we kind of <laughs> talked about it and uh he came up with the idea for her way him him me him and uh dream vision mm, uh, i still gotta meet that cat yeah, uh, me, him, and Dream Vision sat down at Condado's, and we were like, yo, y'all want to make some money? Because I kind of told them, like, I kind of let them in to my, to my world on what we could possibly make. And um, so it's like, yeah. So we all kind of came together, and we came up with these ideas. And then Tone, we, we circled on her way, which was like a – uh, how to be a player, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, he gave off those vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a fe- from a female. I've been yeah. watching that movie since I was like 10, <laughs> so yeah. I definitely knew yeah. that. Someone, I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> so she we, got a movie. She got it. Now. Yeah, oh, man, she was doing crazy. her thing. She was doing her thing. So from that moment, I was like, you know, and then, you know, they didn't, them fellas didn't get paid for anything. They took that risk on um, saying, hey, let's do this film. Um, 
no money up front. We know because no film that I've ever done, I made any money off mm-hmm. from up front. You know, everything I've done is sacrificed. Everything, rent, <laughs> car no, knows, you know it. Up front, unless you got a big network or something. Yes. Or Netflix mm-hmm. giving you that. Yeah. You know, those right. Right. Tubi, in a way, Tubi, you know. Right. So if Tubi can give you a hundred thousand, what can I work <coughs> off of that? And then right. we'll budget the right. rest. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, we went from that, and then you know, tone. tone I wrote it actually. I wrote her way. I wrote that in four days, and it's a short. It's like only an hour long, though. You mm-hmm. know. So I, I wrote that film, but then he directed it, and um, and and of course, Dream filmed it, and then um. Tears for Tasha was my very first film that was not written by me, mm-hmm. and it was written by Crash Minotti. And mm-hmm. um, okay, Crash? yeah, yeah, Crash he wrote it. So funny story. Yeah, he yeah, did. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So I you think get, I see his name all over. It. Yeah, yeah. A little backstory. Yeah, he makes sure of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. This, but um, uh, Crash. I was out in L.A. one time on just a business trip, and uh, he was like, dog, I got this song called Tears for Tasha. I think it will be a great movie. Mm-hmm. Here's another rapper or a person talking about they got a story idea. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was like, all right, play it. He played it. I was like, oh, yeah, this is dope. I, like I do that most people. I'm like, man, all you got to do is just write it and then come back to me, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And I didn't think he would. About two years later, he came back. He was like, bro, I got a script. Or actually, he had to outline, and then he was like, how do I go about writing a script? So I told him um, Celtics, C-E-L-T-X, for my beginning filmmakers who want to write. Mm-hmm. It's a free program. He downloaded it, and he wrote it. And he wrote it in, I don't know, a matter of a month or two, maybe shorter than that. And um, I read it. I did some updates to it and whatever. And before you know it, I raised the money. Actually, I Imperium funded that. So we didn't even raise the money. We 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 filmed, we uh, financed that. And he wrote it. He directed it. I wanted to direct it. And he was like, we had a meeting. And he was like, man, I got this vision. And I said, man, you know, it's crazy. When I was reading, I had this vision. And he said, but I think they'll be like this. And I said, mm-hmm. you know what? You'll direct it because we're not about to be sitting here mm-hmm. going back and forth on this and all of that. So it's your vision. It's your baby. You'll do it. So, um, yeah. you know, with my structure and everything, we got it done. And then the final film, uh, Affliction, my cousin wrote it. No, my cousin created it. Antonio wrote it. Tone and Tone Antonio Davis. He wrote it, and then of course with my structure and everything, we went and we did it. So um, yeah, man, three films are mine. Three films is not mine, uh, but everything has always been edited by me because not everyone can edit. And there's something about pacing. There's <coughs> something about everything about like even my trailers. I I gotta I gotta pat myself on the back. I don't really your trailers is on point. I like them. I do all my trailers because yeah. everybody can't do trailers. You know what I'm saying? You got to make it. I a know I can't do no trailer. You I, can't? I shoot. I, I, that's surprising to hear from you, though, man. Bruh, that's crazy. Like, I could shoot anything under the sun, but when it comes to trailers, nope. I'm going to hand that off trailers? to somebody else. Yeah. That's like, that's like my favorite part of the process. No. Nope. Your, your football trailers was dope. Yeah, yours, yeah that's uh, good. Those was hard. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's really just the art of, you know, storytelling. You know, yeah, you know some people, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I know. You know what I'm saying? I do what I do what I do. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I am Matty Jackson. You know what I mean? I'm stupid. I'm just an old nigga. I'm trying to make it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't do that, man. It's more on the technical side for me. Yeah, I, yeah. I'd rather color grade, edit. Can I get some more of that? Damn, man. I was sitting over here. Don't take no sip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't do that. Yeah. So you when know in, when we was in Kroger, it's all a funny story because uh, what's your what's your son's name? Again? DJ. DJ. Yeah. Because we got DJ here, man. We is uh we we went out to eat. Today's my son's eighth birthday. Happy birthday! Shout out my son, I met Jackson. Shout out, Mr. February twenty eighth, Pisces gang. And he, so we go to Kroger's. We go to Roosters. We eat. We go to Kroger's. I'm like, yo, I got to get some wine because remember I hit y'all up. Mm-hmm. Like, I was like, I can't not show up like without wine after I <laughs> said that. That's you like, said, I'm yeah. <laughs> this dude had it in my gun. I went in there, <laughs> forgot when I left the crib. I couldn't find my wallet. <laughs> mm. We get all the way to the self-checkout. I got my all the primes, you know, two bottles of wine. <coughs> <coughs> Bro, the lady come up. She like, I need to see your ID. I mm. said, oh, dang. So I uh, sat him right there, and I was like, it's fine. And then my son, Kate, was, like, insisting on putting his 
bottles of wine. I was like, son, you can't touch the wine. <laughs> Don't touch <laughs> the wine. I'm like, bro, you trying to get us him up tonight. Oh, man. Bro, I'm trying, he just trying to put it up there, trying to be helpful. Yeah. And I'm like, so then we leave. And I had to tell him why we got to leave. He like, why don't we, why don't you want your stuff? I was like, man, daddy got to go get mommy. Mommy got to come here. <laughs> 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 So we get in the car, the first thing he says, hey, Ma, you got to buy Dad's alcohol. I was like, this just sounds crazy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you imagine where they're going to be at? Like, they're going to be so grown here soon, too, man. man. Like, we're going to blink. Just even seeing yep. Kim's son just a minute ago just blew my mind. Because, yeah. again, I mean, Bishop. I remember Bishop, like, what, seven? How old is he now? Eleven. Eleven. So, yeah, he was, like, seven at a point of time. Maybe even younger than that, yes. Yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah, maybe even younger than that. So just seeing how fast these kids grow and how mature they mm-hmm. is. And I always joke with them. I'm like, smell this. You know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, don't you stay away. Because mm-hmm. I even got a four-year-old who he's a daredevil. He's that kid that's unlike any of my other kids. Like, whoa, bro. Like, yeah, so he a little dangerous. But, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, man, um, just just thinking about just all of this how everything comes to full circle just being on this podcast with you two out of all the people mm-hmm. like it's like man it's still blowing my mind it's still surreal to me because it's like you know you guys were a huge impact at a point in time in my career you know and i i look forward like i i think i hit you up uh for affliction actually you you know and you were like i was like get me a um i think i told you i was like give me a a, a, di- a demo reel or something like that see that's the thing and that's why i gotta get what you done because I don't know what all that means. You know what I mean? Like, it's I just know a what a series of your clips. Yeah, like, very, like, yeah. But, like, I haven't shot movies or... It could have been music videos. But, like, but all work. of your all like, quippers yeah, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of work. You know what I mean? You do. Like, you that's know what I mean? that's but, your year. So I'm having how to can you, you How can you that compress that like, into, like, 60 seconds or a minute and 30 seconds? How can you take... Some of your best clips, some of the things that you like, man. That's He's fire. doing it now with the with the basketball stuff, man. Oh, see, I mean, you yeah, and your you wedding stuff. You know what I'm saying, bro? I don't want to hear. It. Yeah, but, you overthink. No, nope, just stop. No. Nope. So, anyways, what's the next subject we talk about? <laughs> Kim, Kim came back. Yeah, where did you come from, Atlanta? <laughs> <laughs> He's still getting flown now. That, that was that ain't nothing old, man. I, that yeah, I ain't so driving cool. nowhere, bro. I'm sorry, man. I can't, I can't. But no, I, I, I started doing the movie with Lav, mm-hmm. and I just y'all know how it is with kids, family. I got so I, at sometimes I'm too busy for my own self. Yeah, and my wife would tell me she'd be like, "Bad, look, you got like." You doing podcast? Yeah, doing man. Podcast. This dude is doing fifteen different things, bro. Like, so okay. So the first thing was the podcast, right? I, I bet I got you. E, e, I'm with you. Yeah. So okay, everything's going into the podcast. We he got the equipment. You know, he done bought the the mics. The, you know, all that stuff. And so we we was full fledged in. Okay. The next, the following week, now he's doing Reynoldsburg basketball games, football games, whatever. I'm like, bro, <laughs> like, what happened to the podcast? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> this dude on. is everywhere. Still still he has 15 million ideas. Today. He has 15 million ideas, man. Tomorrow, do, man. Tomorrow's gonna be something else. I'm a it's, drinker. It's, I'm a drinker. That's which good. is cool. That's good. It, it, which is cool. That, but like right now, like I'm really in a space to where it's like I'm really like focusing on either giving. Or not even taking, mm. just giving to myself. Right. Like, you know, I've, I've poured out so much to other people. When you just think about all the times you volunteered to do stuff, you've done stuff just off the strength, projects you've done, you've endorsed, you've done this, you've done that, you sponsored people for 12 months, you know, like mm. I, for five last five years, I somebody was getting free or access mm-hmm. to everything I had. Mm, yeah. Whatever I had. Yeah. That was like I think I seen you doing that at a point in time. <coughs> you was creating reels on that. Like I'm about to give a person a free video or Oh no. Nah, so that was like just a campaign thing. That's oh, just okay. like a, gotcha. another episode of Space and Out and just okay. being a creative. Okay. Just wanting to be, you know That's just, dope though. I, like you... I had those moments, but like what I'm realizing is like now like it's so when there's so many facets about yourself that you like about you, mm-hmm. you want to give all those things out, right? Right. 
And you want to give out your strength. You want to give out your love. You want to give out your wisdom. You want to give out your money if you can. Money don't always have to be physical. In a physical form, it could be all my equipment. That's money. Right. If I wasn't giving it to you, you have to pay for it. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, you know, you just get to a space. And, like, this year, I'm just to a space, man. Like, I don't want... No, I done had beef with people. I ain't, I don't know why I got beef with. Right. And like last year for me, I had to squash a lot of stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? Just like, just bro, that stuff dead, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't consider myself beefing or having no type of issues with nobody. Dang. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a very likable person. Yeah. Um, and I love people. So yeah. I tend to pour out more. And sometimes I feel like sometimes as creators, when we, Especially when you like like yourself, blessed to be able to put people in certain positions, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Even if they just here on the strength of the opportunity and not the money. Yeah. That's that's like that's worth more than oh man getting paid oh, in man. most cases. Absolutely. <coughs> and you don't have to do that. You know. No, what I mean? you, no, no, man. No, nope. you don't. I was just telling my son on the way here, and I even made a Facebook status like, you know, talent. If whether you big or whether you small, um. When you own something, like it, like if you're a part of something mm-hmm. and you make it like it's your own, it's very much appreciated. And like to anyone, whether you're a producer, director, anything like so. If I hire, if I hire you to be an actor and you just play the extra, but when it comes out and you pushing it like it's your own, yeah. man, that means so much mm-hmm. because it's like yo, know, you take pride in what you're doing. So me personally, I love working with people who you know, take pride in what they do, whether you a camera op or whether you a extra or a background actor. I love those type of people. However, if you're a person that just come in to work for a check, yeah, I kind of, you know, I always <coughs> turn my nose yep. up to people it's like that. Because the, the work is going to be different. Yeah, it's man. Gonna it's going to be a lot. So I had a, I ain't going to talk, I talked about this offline, but, um, you know, I have worked with multiple people who have shown their lack of passion in what they're doing. And unfortunately, they will never work with me again because mm-hmm. of that, you know. So I love working with people who just take pride in what they do, man. And mm-hmm. I think um, in my beginning years of filmmaking, you know, again, tipping my hat off to Kim, he loved what he did. You know, he loved to make sure – and his thing was quality. And I think that stuck with me. You know, I was like, okay, I'm not going backwards, you know. Like, you know, if it was audio, he had the new road – to go mics so like you know what when the mugs first dropped mm-hmm. he like look i'm this is what we're gonna do to improve audio mm-hmm. like it was each film it was something about how can we improve mm-hmm. something whether it was you know audio or whether it was the video i got a new lens yeah. I, uh, this is how you do a shadow depth of field is going to give you a crispier image you know what i'm saying so it was those things that i'm like okay this is why i keep on wearing and i think and maybe i could be wrong but on the 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 other end of that sort with us I was always driven on making sure things was organized. I was always driven on making sh- making sure things were was good and fun, you know. So it was like with his technical sti- skills and with my artistic skills, it just worked. It flowed, you know. And I look for that even now to this day. Like, you know, my next film, I can't guarantee I'll have the same crew, you know. It's like, you know, some people kind of dropped the ball and some people showed me that, whoa, you're worth working working yeah. with, you know, because you love what you do. Like our DP, man, um, Noah, shout out to you, Noah. You know, Noah, it was his very first, very first feature, fi- <clears throat> his very first feature film. And, you know, Noah's a tough guy to work with, like to a, with me, not to with anyone else, because I'm a, I'm very, very like I could be stubborn at times. So like it was point of times me and Noah was maybe bumping heads on set before mm-hmm. set. But when you when it was done, everything looked so beautiful. And in the words of him, it was worth it. And I was looking back at some behind the scenes stuff and I'm like, man, this dude was really he it was only hard to work with him because he was like he was really ambitious with the, the image that he wanted to capture. And, and I was really, very... Sometimes that's more... That's like light years ahead of what your vision dude, is. I would rather and work with those type of people. Yeah, you know what I'm it's saying? Because, hey, his viewpoint, like that cinematography eye that he has, yeah, was just years ahead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and, I, and, and I had and a I mindset. Had. I was to be stubborn in my mind. And then it's like, no, this is how it should be. This is how we do. This is, mm-hmm. you know, because there's this thing about breaking the line. You know, like a lot of people don't know what breaking the line is. <laughs> 
I had to learn that on my second film, you know, and and for any of my people who's watching, you know, if I'm talking to you this way, the other per the way the camera is like, so if I'm looking left of the camera, Mm -hmm. when when we look at the other person, they should be looking right of the camera. Mm -hmm. They shouldn't be looking left of the camera, too. So, you know, it'll be times where I'm on set. I'm like, no, we're going to break the line. We're going to break the line. And he's like, can can I just finish setting the camera first? And then you come in and I'm like, okay, you know, and then. He'll come in, make sure the lighting and da 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 all well, the little. Because I mean, that's a you hire people because you trust them. Yeah, and you brought me here for a reason. Right? Yeah, and I think that was the main point. Sometimes for them, yeah. directors can get a little bit overly ambitious. Yes, and start giving just orders mm. instead of relationship. Yeah, like, and it's one thing. As uh, my my biggest thing, as long as well, whatever we're doing is for the ultimate goal of the final product, absolutely, that I'm with. But give me a chance, because sometimes a director will jump your gun and you'd be like, "Brother, I haven't even put a battery in here." Mm-hmm. Right. I let me. I was <laughs> that was where I was going with it too, my yeah, brother. Yeah. Like, and if he wasn't, now he is because he know that's what you want. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So. And see, you know, when you're working with a team of people, you have to really, like you said, you hired them to do a job. So when you're working with a team of people, you have to make sure that you just allow them to do their job. And then, you know, if there's any correction, then you can go in and kind of tweak some things. But, you know, working on a set full of uh, uh, talented crew can be a little challenging if you've never done it. You know, again, everyone that worked on Affliction worked on big sets before. You know, not everyone, but majority of the people have worked on union films and just bigger sets. I haven't. And it's funny enough, I'm the one who's making this happen. I'm learning the entire time. So I didn't know that, you know, once the camera is going to be here, the gaffer and the grip have to set this light and set this and set this. And then let's check it. Then you get the actors in the place. And then if that's not right, then you got to get them out and tweak or whatever, you know. So now I know. (laughs) Because big now production ain't running gun. Yeah, you know yeah. yeah. And, and I've been so like, used to that. And that's man. where we can't, yeah. yeah can't so do, a lot yeah. of people can't dis- can't decipher. Like, the, people decipher short form from long form. Mm-hmm. But they can't. You don't know how to turn that switch off. Yeah. It's like, that's why a lot of, you see a lot of filmmakers that do a lot of short form content. They don't want nothing to do with the wedding industry. Oh, man. They don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah. Because to tell that story is not at the pace that I like to move or... This and that, but I wish I could have got in weddings, man. Weddings is beautiful. I mean, it's cool for a season, yeah. but eventually, yeah. what you're gonna want for your talent is gonna exceed mm. a lot of the markets that mm. wedding people even being in. Because the average wedding videographer make two, three grand, but when you been doing it for eight years and now you asking twelve. Yeah, they're gonna look. It's different. Different. So it's yeah. kind of like music videos in a way, huh? It's just like, like film. Yeah, it's just like everything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. The only thing that stands the test of time is the things that we really want to do. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, eventually you're going to, I mean, you're going to grow. You want to get away from certain things, so. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, we all grow. We all have been places. I've heard Kim's stories, talked about how, you know, sh- man, he got into it. He was doing music and beats and all that, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, and all other different creative spaces. Yeah. Yourself, you know what I mean? Theater. That's not necessarily behind cameras. Right. Like, that's... <laughs> Jumping out on stage, memorizing lines, yeah, for doing two all hours that. So hours, I mean, yeah. you had to put yourself. You had already been put through the ringer to know what to expect. Right. That's what makes you a great director. Yeah, well, I we appreciate all go that. through stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I, part of process. I, I really appreciate that, man. Yeah, dude, it's it's definitely it's definitely a growing process. You have to not give up. You have to just continue to focus on the craft. And, and maintain your relationships. I think that was one thing we were talking about earlier is just like investing into your relationships and making sure that the people who are really valuable in your life, you remind them that somehow, you know, whether it's an opportunity, a lunch date, a hey, checking on you, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. you have to maintain and invest into your relationships. You had mentioned something about like squash and beef, you know, it's kind of like, for some odd reason, I become an unlikable person when I don't abide by what someone else wanted me to do mm-hmm. or what they thought I was going to do, right? You know, a couple of people I had to fire from my set. <coughs> I didn't fire them because I didn't like you. I fired you because you didn't do the job well. Right. But that don't mean that I don't want to maintain this relationship or see how we can maybe explore other avenues. 
And unfortunately, they don't. You know, I tried to double back on a couple people, and they're like, you know, it's water on your bridge. It's okay, but I'm good. Well, I wanted to take you out the lunch. Sometimes, I mean, that relationship, that tie, need to get severed because yeah. I care more about the relationship yeah. than I do where it's working together. Yeah. Like, I'd rather I that more than anything. With you. I done met your kids. I done yeah. met your mm-hmm. wife. I've been to your crib. Been in, you know, man, yeah. we've been hospitable. Like, ain't, if this is the thing that's causing strain, then let's just remove it because yeah. this ain't this ain't worth it. Yeah, it's not worth it, and I cared about that don't more. Get that, you know yeah, I, mean? I had to have a conversation maybe a couple of weeks ago with someone who I poured a lot of my time, energy, and resources into, and um, you know, for some odd reason, some some it all boils down to miscommunication. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, it's miscommunication. So, um, you know, I had that conversation with them, and I'm like, look, man, you know. Here's where I stand, and here was why I did what I did. And then, you know, they had an opportunity to say, hey, this is what I felt. Um, a lot of it wasn't really ownership or integrity from their part. But sometimes, you know, you don't need that. You you know, you mentioned earlier is how do you maintain that, you know, certain relationships. A lot of it kind of goes to integrity, man, and just being a leader and being the bigger person. I mean, shout out to you for trying to squash those beasts because that shows – you know, the leader qualities that you have. And I think, again, I can, you know, relate to that because it's like, you know, if I, like you said, we love hard. If I love you hard and it's just something that just seemed a little bit iffy and I, I'm not ready to talk about it, I ain't even about to talk about it, you know, because <coughs> maybe I don't know why I was mad or maybe I just don't know, you know. Not but everything's worth addressing yeah. all the time. Uh, yeah. Especially, you got to think about it, man. Me and you, we get to working on set, me and Kim. As this relationship grows, there's going to be things about you I may not right. like. It, mm-hmm. And it may not have nothing to do with you yeah. and your character yeah. or make me love you any different or yeah. see you any different. But I don't expect to be 100% like for all my characters and features. Mm-mm. I don't expect anybody to like every single aspect about yeah. me. There might be some things you be like, because a little too, you know. I had to mention that, you know, because I didn't realize, which I do know, but I didn't realize how slick of a tongue I can have. I say slick shit sometimes and and not realize that I said it because I was just in the heat of the moment. (laughs) (laughs) So Uh, I'm from the north side, you know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah, sometimes, man, I be, you know, and I try my best to try to maintain you know, some level of professionalism. But, you know, oftentimes, man, some people take you there and you got to remind them, like, you know, I'm not the one to play with, you know. You know, we talked about people that, you know, work for, um, you know, people that take pride in their work. You know, I had some time. You know, when we're on set, if we're doing fog, some type of fog, whether it's the aero can or we got Mm -hmm. a haze machine, if it's like that for that set, and you're operating a camera or you're uh, a person who or gaffer or something like that, that next scene, they better be fall because we have to maintain the consistency, right? Mm-hmm. And I've been in, partic- you know, specific, uh, not specific, but I've been in those situations where that didn't happen. And it's like, are you here for working for a check? Or I might say, well, I hate people that's working for a check and keep it pushing. And not notice that I said it, and it bothered somebody, you know. But it's like it was truth to what I said. But it, it'd be little slick stuff like that that rubs people the wrong way. And I'm like, but, right. but that's what I've been the truth. Set, the you truth. know what I mean? Like you, you learning them. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. that's why I say not everything's meant to be said. Yeah. Because some things I might just not. I'm some things in our relationship I'm not gonna like about Dom. But guess what? I gotta learn to accept them about Dom. Yeah. If, if this is going to work, what I want. right? Yeah, exactly. like, like, bro, exactly. you don't get in marriage to change your wife or right. your wife to change you. Right. I don't yeah. get in this relationship that we have on set or whatever to change who you are. Right. I should be getting to learn who you are. It's, that's why some things is just pushed off to the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because Absolutely. if it don't, this is my theory, if it don't change the way I move for you, mm-hmm. and most of the time anybody I keep around me, if it go down, you with right company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amen. Down with you. Amen. You know yeah. what I mean? like, and that's where I'm at like, now. Yeah, for I sure. Even, like, you ain't even going to see me around nobody if I ain't <laughs> on that type of energy with them. Yeah. But if it don't change that for me with you to where it's like somebody running for him, like, yeah. 
If I ain't got that, like, then it ain't big. Right. And, you know, I like the art, how the art brought us together. Because, like, you know, this, this don't got to make the tape, but I remember, you know, with uh, – he, he called me yesterday and was just like, you know, what's up with you and Kim? You and Kim go? I'm like – I, I love Kim. Like, I absolutely mm. have no problem with him in a way. You know, I mean, I, was, I can't even remember what it was. I just remember borrowing some equipment and then dropping it off. And I don't even remember how I even called or talked about it since then. And, you know, we maybe we could talk about it later. But I'm just in my head thinking, like, I, don't, I just know it was something. And, and, and it just moved on. But I just love that it was never nothing, again, that was too detrimental. And, again, the, how the art, it goes back to how powerful art is. How mm-hmm. Ain't that, like. It's crazy how we're here again, yeah, th- how things come back, back full circle yeah, yeah. because of art. You being a creator, you loving to hear from, di- you know, directors and other creators in the community and just you trying to grow your brand and things like that. And I just think that it's beautiful and brilliant. And some things, if it's <laughs> worth it, and now that I look back, I wish I wish I did get in contact a little bit sooner to say, hey, there was n- I'm good. You know, it's like it's all love. You good. You know, and I think I did tagging him a couple things just to kind of like indicate. Yeah, like, you did. Yeah, you I'm going to fuck with yeah, you. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I didn't know where it was he, going. I was like, all right, do I? He liked it. it? Yeah, and, I was yeah, like, yeah. and I was like, I showed my wife. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, yeah, we bro, good. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> the things creators be going through, bro. Y'all, be, y'all just don't that's know, funny. bro. That's like, like <laughs> next episode, I got my wife coming on that, coming on the uh, show. And oh, no cap, yeah, she gonna give you the, tr- the the real tea about you know being the wife of a creative. We gotta Oof. get all our wives on board, Oof. man, and do and man. do one. Just get them all together. Shout out Imagine to my those lady, stories oh, that man. would be told. You know what I mean? Man, and my lady helps me out on every set. She like my co-producer. She you know she go get the meals for us when you know she'll order it for us. She'll go get it for us. Go take everybody's what they want to eat. Uh, she'll bring in the crafts, you know, to eat. Uh, she make you know if she, whatever department need help if she can help or if she know the skills she'll try to. Um, and again, I'm not the easiest person to work with, <laughs> especially during those 14 or you know I don't think I ever went over 18 days. So mm-hmm. those two weeks, two and a half weeks of filming, I'm a whole nother monster. I'm not mean. I'm just stern, you know. And sometimes I take it out on her. So. Oh, it could be my face. It could be anything, and she, you know, and she, she, she lives with it. So she shout out, shout out to it. my lady, man. Shout out to her for That's just, you know, maintaining my, my, my uh, sanity. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. man. Cause, dude, I, I can only imagine if the shoe was on the other foot. Well, well fuck it, you could do it. I'll stay home. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't need my help. You ain't grateful. <laughs> you know. So yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah, right. Fine. So yeah, bro, yesterday, bro, I was down here and I was like telling my wife, like, I said, I don't know how I'm about to set this up for these niggas, <laughs> you know, the the studio, because I've only done it live once. Oh, and that was with Earn. Wow, yeah. yeah. And then now we added another camera. Then we only had two, you know. Mm-hmm. And so she was the one who kind of like gave me the direction, like maybe you should sit over here versus sitting over there, and then leave that space open, and then set your cameras up, like. Wow. You know, so it's just crazy how, the like, input, you know, just yeah, a yeah. little bit of It'd be the smartest things that help, yeah, and man. Wanting to, yeah. you know, you know, pour in. That's her. That's her way of pouring in. Yeah. My my wife. Yeah. Next week, y'all gonna hear, it, bro. Like, yeah, I want to see she, that. She, see how she, that go. She don't. Mm-hmm. She not like a B full film. Like, yeah. like she like if you ain't made it to HBO <laughs> stars or. <laughs> She, you a beef film, you a hood uh, flick, you know uh, what I mean? Okay. So I be okay. watching all these movies down here, you know. I told her I got job Campbell for. She said, "Who?" Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, "Remember a uh, female hustler?" She was like, "Okay, okay." I was like, "Yeah, man." And I was telling her about some of your flicks and different things you got going on, and she was like, "She was like, that's." Hey, I'm happy if you're happy. I don't yeah. do the whole B film. Yeah. You know, she just really, I don't know what it, I was like, you know, y'all some like, people just not into great, it, man. Yeah. I was like, there's a lot of great, like she, but she also the type of person not really, she don't listen to, like, we go find the artist to, to find, you know, mm. ESTG. They, we don't just listen to people that's on the radio. My wife is very like, just, yeah. if you ain't on the radio, she ain't heard your yeah. song, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. she ain't listening. She got her her jams from back in the day. Yeah. And she need she to got, watch Affliction, man. That did, that didn't shouldn't, that shouldn't be on Tubi. That should, <laughs> that's something that should be a little bit higher. We put it on Tubi because of the lead star. He just, he can bring in those impressions. He's like the Tubi king, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Okay. So, a lot of times, yeah, that's a, it's a, it's business decisions that drive 
the market. This one lady told me one time. She said, "You know what? You have to you have to remember your path to market from the beginning stages of making a project." So you know, if we're making a comedy, or if we're making um, a thriller or a horror, even now, like it seems like everyone wants us to do a horror right now. The biggest thing that we need to think about as creators is what's the path to market? Mm. Where is it going to go? You know, and that determines the stars. It determines the mm-hmm. location. It determines, you know, a lot, a lot of different factors. So with this particular case, uh, Noah, our DP, he's like, yo, Dom, I got all the settings and, and gear that we can make this a Netflix movie. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to put it in that format. I got the, I got the, uh, I don't know if it's prime lenses. He, he got it from overseas. This is Affliction? Yeah, this is Kay. Affliction. Uh, he's like, look, man, we come in with different. What did they use the, the glow? What was that glow effect I used on them? No, so it's the, the sm- make the like faces look user, smooth yeah, yeah, and yeah, stuff like, like that. Effect. Yeah, no, it wasn't effect, man. It w- Well, it's a, a filter. It's a uh, ND filter. ND filter yeah. that uh-huh. uh, created that. So it yeah, wasn't a clear. It has there. to be it's like, like a, a Peter, Peter McKinnon. Yeah, but it wasn't a clear sense. one. Is it a pro, like a pro mist kind yeah, of filter? Yeah, it's like a pro yeah, mist yeah, type of filter. Yeah, because yeah. those kind of make your skin softer. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, he didn't like, <laughs> that's one thing. He came in and he watched all our films before he did it, and he was just being uh, very, very uh, critical about how our previous films looked. And he was like, I got to make sure that this film doesn't look like nothing you've done before. And he was like, "I your films are okay, but everyone is so sharp. Like, their faces are sh- mm-hmm. so sharp. And yeah. I'm like, I kind of like that, you know? Mm-hmm. But... He came in and was like, "No, I want their faces to look smooth, smooth and creamy." Yeah, that happens when and you it looks mirrorless. That shooting yeah, mirrorless. Yeah, it makes yeah. everything look sharp. Like everything yeah. super sharp. Yeah, because it's yeah. so auto focus heavy. Yeah, exactly. That's why a lot of people Which I miss that like a in a way. Camera, you know what I mean? Yeah, like manual focus. Yeah, manual racking. That's yeah. Bro, well, that's wait, wait till you come. Wait till y'all come on set and y'all get the film and y'all get a first AC. Y'all gonna be like, man, where has this been at all my life? Because all you gotta do is just sit there, either move the camera, whether you pan or you tilting, or you, you know, you going in, dialing in, and your first AC is gonna do everything else for you. And then even having a gaffer and a grip, I didn't know how important that was because even though Noah did a great job with making sure we had the right camera lenses and all of that, and even shout out to Gracie who did all the racking the first AC, it took our gaffer to be able to shine a light through that window. Like, if we're down here, he's going to figure out how can we go outside to shine that light. You know, even this tube light will work, you know what I'm saying? But then they're going to try to figure out how to to diffuse that a little bit so it's not so harsh, you know? So... I think the combination of having a gaffer and having a, a DP who understand lighting is so, so important with your films because, you know, that's how you get the ultimate image. So today I created a, a list of all the BTS uh, clips and having having a DP with a gaffer is that having a DP that understands lighting. And having lighting a gaffer, is key oh with any camera. Oh Y'all hear that? Every other shooter out there. Lighting is key. Yes. Lighting, yes, and we and I mean, if you look back at Bad Business, that was a really, really well shot film. I mean, from the movements to the lighting to every aspect of that. But shout out to our D, would you would you call it DSLR cameras? Is that what type of camera it was? Yeah, with that? No, I had Miller, mirrorless back then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that <laughs> boy, that aperture on that thing, man, is so beautiful trying to shoot at in dark, dark, you know, yeah, dark yeah, uh, settings, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. So, but you know, with a red, you know, which is what we've been shooting with the last few uh, films, that's not, it's not so good. So when we're shooting, you know, parking lot scenes, yeah, you, gotta, you can't pull in a Sony. Yeah. You got to have, yeah. I mean, wait till y'all see, that's what I was saying. I, c- I created a list of all the BTS clips. So now, you know, I'll be chopping that up tomorrow morning. And I wanted people to see what it took to get those images, you know, okay. that we've got. And, uh, Lighting. Yeah, the lighting. <laughs> oh my God, lighting, lighting, lighting. So we got big key lights, and we had to get a whole grip package from um, OHD. So shout out my people over at OHD, Scott mm-hmm. Handel, David Jeffries. You guys are amazing. Uh, even you, Max, for helping us out with that deal. Uh, because having a G and E package, it matters. Having all the uh, see, I'm not really technical, but I just know you got the um, what do you call them. Uh, all the diffusion, there we go. All the diffusion that you needed is different type of diffusions and having all the, the little, they were doing like arms. I mean, the, the things that they were doing, I was just in my head like, whoa. Mm-hmm. I was like, how long is this going to take? 
I'm, I'm, I'm getting frustrated yeah. because I'm looking at yeah. how long we got at this location yeah. and how long they're taking to try to figure out the lighting. And I'm like, yo, y'all got to figure this out. We got to go faster. We got to go faster. But then, you know, when you look at the film, it's like, okay, it was it was worth it. So. Yeah. And which, uh, so I know I'm getting technical, which reds are y'all using? Yeah, so I think for um, the Komodo was, the red okay. Komodo was shot for Female Hustler 2, her way and tears for Tasha and even a kid named Bug. All those were shot with uh, the Komodo. And then um, I believe Noah owns the Scarlet. Okay. Or the Dragon. The Komodos are the yeah. I think yeah. The Komodos are like what they used to use for like stunt or like drone okay. cameras yeah, yeah. and stuff like they're, that. They're a little smaller. Yeah, they're a little smaller. Uh, but what Noah had, he came in with, I think either a Scarlet or a Dragon. I couldn't, can't really remember, but this was the first time we had like six different lenses, you know? So, and he was a guy that like, if, if, if you're sitting right there and that's the setting, he, he would want to be like, say for instance, for us, we'll probably put a 35 and we'll be maybe right there with DJ is or where this is, you know, to shoot it. That way we can kind of get like a chest up, you know, mm -hmm. the 35 is going to get that. Um, you know, if you throw a 50 on it, you get a nice depth of feel, we'll probably just get the neck up. Mm -hmm. He's the type of guy that will want to throw an 80 and go back there and shoot mm -hmm. it for the depth of feel. Fit, yeah, you know crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's me. That's what I like for sure. <laughs> go further back. Yeah, with yeah, the yeah. Close. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, and so, you know, it just depends on, um, it just depends on, I guess, the DP or whatever. But, uh, yeah, as far as like, because you asked the question, how are we getting this equipment? Um, yeah, it's going to be right. I prioritize hiring DPs who own their own equipment. Mm -hmm. However, say, for instance, you guys don't own the the cameras that we're trying to go for for the image. Well, we'll figure out how to rent it. And then we'll look at it as, like, do y'all know how to operate it? You know what I mean? Or do we need to hire somebody who can operate it? Because, like, uh, like what I noticed with my past film, Noah's a great DP, but he's like, look, dude, if you ever need me just to operate and hire a DP, you know, that's fine. Because Noah understands lighting, but our gaffer understood lighting a lot more. And he's actually a DP. So I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can hire the gaffer as the DP next time. Mm -hmm. And then Noah, you just operate, you know, because mm -hmm. some DPs want to control the camera. They're like, I don't want nobody touching the camera. I want to touch mm -hmm. the camera. And I've worked with those type of people. Yeah. And then you got people who's like, look, man, I'd rather be your DP, but I don't want to touch the camera. I need somebody to operate the camera because I need to be teaming up with the gaffer and grip to make sure the lighting looks good. And I'm going back, checking the monitor. And I'd rather somebody else do all the heavy work. Because do you know them big-ass cameras, man, especially them res, having it on a shoulder mount, that hot sand, I mean, it's hot air just hitting you in the air. Because I had to shoot some of the explicit scenes in – um. And affliction because just for many reasons and i'm sitting there on that shoulder mount on an apple box just sweating because the hot fan is just hitting me in the the face while i'm sitting here trying to hold the camera man and so yeah kim i'm still that guy i love taking over the camera sometimes yeah. man <laughs> no, i know uh, yeah <laughs> i gotta you know it's like hey I, it's a certain shot yeah i mean it's even down to even tears for tasha there was this like running gun scene where the girl's coming around the corner and i like look Y'all not doing this how I think it should. So I took the camera. I asked Dream. I was like, you mind? I'll, I'll protect your baby. Because, you know, Dream owns you know, that camera. Yeah, you got your own cameras, too. You know yeah. how it is. So I'm like, yeah. So I'm sitting there with the camera. And, you know, we walking through. I'm backtracking. I'm backtracking. And then, like, she has to go over to the left. So I got a uh, quick pan to the left. And then this guy is getting out the car at the same time. So I'm tilting down at the uh, at his shoes. And then I'm tilting back up. And then um, we, we got to track the, the girl again who's chasing after uh, my son's character trying to get this bag. And, you know, not everyone could do that. You I mean, you can have an amazing DP that understand lighting, that understands angles, camera lenses. But not everyone can do yeah, that. Really that type I mean, of work. Especially when you start talking about putting them on, like, body suits. Oh, my God, like, yeah. Third arms, Have you seen people jumping off of, uh, like, the buildings with the camera operators going down and stuff like that Man. on a bungee and stuff? I'm not him. <laughs> yeah, it's not me. <laughs> I'm not him. No. Nope. Just imagine. No. Yeah. What you, have you, I haven't seen that movie yet. Uh, the one they shot them all with FX3s. Uh, it's a sci-fi. Yeah, it's a sci-fi. that movie. Oh, uh, creator! Yes. Creator, yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, amazing, man. You seen it? I haven't yeah, I seen it yet, it, man. And I'm like, that's what made me be thinking, like, man, maybe I can, 
shoot it myself and just get a first AC, but I'm not that talented. That director, yeah. and you know that director shot it himself. Mm-hmm. Did he? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, I've been wanting to watch that joint, man, because I was like, I have three of them joints. Really? Yeah. Wow. So it's like talk? I've been, I have ideas that nah. I want to shoot. <laughs> what talking about Tim? <laughs> well, his, uh, his gear pack. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever, don't even talk about them FX threes down there, bro. <laughs> nah, but for real, like Have you I shot on them I, already. I was trying to get an FX three. Yeah, that's what scammed. that's that's the one that's on you now. I got scared, and I have two more though. So Fire. I've been wanting to shoot something, just something, not crazy, but just good. He was yeah. behind it, yeah. And it's you know, so, <laughs> but I I got to see this movie because they yeah. like I saw he bought was just. I mean, he said there were some other. I cameras mean, in it, but yeah. mo- but he for the majority, that. yeah, that yeah, was his just yep for the portability and everything. These, I think, and you know it, it's not the camera, it's the lens, it's the glass. Lenses and the ice, the uh, the low light capabilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I mean, twelve thousand eight hundred. Come on, oh man, my goodness, that is that's ridiculous. Amazing. You know what I'm saying? A seven four going on a twelve thousand eight hundred. That's It does, but uh, so, I'm okay. behind. I got the A seven S three, and that came out with that. Same after. thing. Same thing as the FX3. Okay. Okay, it's the same sensor, just different body. Got it. Now, the A74, your 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 main ISOs are, on that one, I believe, is 800 and 2,500. Mmm, 600 and 2,500, I believe. Okay. That one is uh, 12,800 okay. and 800 ISO. Those are the two ISOs you just need to work with. That's all you need. Got you. Wow. So yeah, dynamic range. I mean, now <coughs> the Reds might have a little bit more of a dynamic range, but those are right behind it. Yeah, no, which I is know. why I do yeah. use those. You know what I'm saying? Like it's ridiculous. Look, I tell so. you, there's a cine lens out there that they use with this camera. Whenever I can find it, I heard it's a grip. Really, I heard it's a grip. Mm-hmm. I see my boy Larry. He um and he shoots with the uh, Ari. Alexa, mm-hmm. and he has the lens. Interesting. I mean, What's the lens? I, <coughs> I forget the name of it. It's like, I know it's like maybe like a 17 to 70. Put it put it in I, the I, I in the video when you edit what you find out. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm yeah. going to find it. I'm going to find it, but the lens is so hard. And really? it, with those cameras, most of them ain't in focus. Mm. That Sony didn't even make lenses to be used for the camera. Really? That camera has to operate with an E mount. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Well, so email or A mount? To PL. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, because so like the a can- native okay. mount that comes on that camera, so you need an ad- they don't make no lenses for. Don't you need like a speed? Yeah, you have an adapter. Or a B speed adapter? No, you just, yeah, it's an adapter to turn it, change it to PL. So, oh, so now okay. Okay. Gotcha. Red and Ari Alexa lenses and stuff on it, but there's a lens out there that <coughs> it gives you a cra- <coughs> crazy wide view. But as it pushes in, the lens has this built in autofocus in it. Really? So, like, as like for cinema cameras like that, the, like it would be a dream. Wow. To be able to use that with that. I see I, the way I record with that, I don't record internally or nothing. Everything's getting recorded on your to the show gun. Wow, that is amazing. So I y'all taught me something new. This, I don't even use this camera that like that often. Only when only really for this movie and when I'm doing yeah. like interviews and stuff like that. I want to shoot with an Ari so bad, and I wanted to shoot with that camera. You know, I, I the the FX three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to shoot with those. Uh, I really want to shoot. With a, you got three Aries? <laughs> no, I'm playing. No. <laughs> Let's talk, man. You got some baby Aries, though. In a way, oh, really? yeah, man. Yeah. You know what I would do is we would, we, would, we would throw some cinema lenses on that mug and we and we'll we'll have a ball, you know. Um, but yeah, dude. I mean, when it comes to like certain cameras and stuff, like I said, we just shot a short film with the A7S III, and I mean that came out looking. Yeah. <coughs> great to me, you know Same what I'm sensor. saying? And it, and then another thing I'm noticing, the color grade. You know, like I've got a lot better with my color grade over the years. Um, cuz that was one thing that I was trying to improve from no, day 1. You're man. shooting on S log 3 on the A7S3. Right? Yeah, so everything okay. is raw. so with red, you know, they shoot I think you get like four different files or I mean like six different files or something like that when you shoot it. Like it's shooting Red is are you, yeah, so red you could shoot 
actual raw. Yeah, it's all raw. Yeah, yeah so yeah. you can change all the settings in the post. Yeah. However, like it, as if you were shooting on that camera. So every film that y'all saw, starting with Female Hustler Two, was all shot in raw. So and those was all colored by me. You know, mm-hmm. except Female Hustler. Two, that was all Lux. I ain't even gonna lie. I was like, look, man, we gonna throw a mojo. Yes, yeah, we were sure that song too back then. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, yeah, yeah. So throw that mojo Lux. <laughs> <laughs> look cinematic enough. Yeah, yeah, to me. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm adjust it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm sure you learned a lot since then from the color grading. So it's high, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. is this like, okay, since we're shooting log, mm. you know, as you know, we know, we all know it's crazy flat. So, even though you gotta have all that light pumping in to to be able to you know have the uh, the right you know to dial in. So on the, on on the FX three, mm-hmm. you have to at least you have to be at exposure at plus two one point seven one point three okay. at the least. Yeah, over, okay. Yep. So you gotta overexpose, um, and then of course in a post you bring, you that, bring that down to how you want it to look. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So. So what I wonder is, because like with the reds, even though we were shooting in, you know, flat images, mm-hmm. it, the output on our monitors were what it would look like, you know, yeah, what we yeah, were going yep, for. So yep. you could do that same thing. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. That with both of these. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You that's can change that's, it rec 709 or if you there have we go. your own built-in yep. look, just go ahead and plug in. And a lot of people yeah. kind of do that. I know this too. Another tip for y'all, if y'all don't already do it, is like when people, you know, hire y'all for jobs, instead of like, you know, even though if you know that you're going to use the money for maybe a new gear or something like that. <laughs> Funny enough, the last two DPs I worked with, they're like, you know, uh, like for the female hustler too, they're like, look, man, I want a red. I had one, I sold it, but I want one. So you don't got to pay me, pay for the red. I'm like, all right, bet, you know, because it was a little mm. bit cheaper than what I was going to pay you in the first place, you know. And even with, you know, with this, the latest film with Affliction, you know, Noah already had his own camera, his own lenses and everything, but he wanted newer lenses. So, I mean, I got text messages of like all these different switzerland i mean he he was in love with like foreign made uh mm-hmm. cinema lenses that's a foreign made yeah and i could tell from just from looking at it so it's one of those things where it's like he's like just pay for the lenses it was a lens kit yeah, like lenses are first lenses. over the camera yeah yeah and i was like okay bet you know and you know we we were, we were able to work out a deal where you know pretty much we financed the lenses you know, if he did a good job and everything yeah. and completed his work, and then you know we'll transfer the ownership over to you because from a company standpoint, that's an asset that we're purchasing. You know, right. so we got to write it off as an asset, and then w- then you can transfer the asset or sell it or you know as a gift or something like that. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, man. You know, when so a little key tip to you guys, yeah. if y'all already didn't know, is you know if y'all do get hired for certain jobs or whatever, think about what you can do to improve that production. And then, you know, then you can be like, okay, and maybe add your fee on it, too. You right, know, right, right. You can pocket something. Um, and then another thing is look into royalties. How can you get royalties for certain things, especially if you're working with a filmmaker who can um, possibly see some type of money from it, you know? So these are little tips, little gems that I like to drop for on sure. people who don't even really, you know, know or whatever. But, uh, but yet, yeah, look. I'm telling you now, man. Put your put your uh, reel together. <laughs> Comp- compress all your best <laughs> clips if you can. Man, got, whether it's weddings, music game, videos. Stuff, put the put. I mean, sixty seconds of some of your best clips. Kim knows how to do it. He's been doing you. You got a reel. You no, know, man. So that's reel. not something I've never done. Is is a is a is a reel of artists. So like everybody. Push their stuff together at the end of the year. Right. I I don't want to even take the time. Really? Out yeah. I feel That's like a lot, huh? It is. I have too much. Man, <laughs> I I don't want to do it, man. I don't want to do it, Stay but prep to do that all year. Like, but I mean, it's a hard, good right? thing. But it's like, okay, I see people do. I be like, okay, yes, yeah, cool. But mm-hmm. what now? Would you what 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 did that do for you? Sometimes you know it's just to kind of either one gloat for most people, but two, it kind of helps you get that next job, you know. So like for me, I know your work capability. I know what you're gonna come with. So if I was to like consider you to do a film, it's like I already know because especially right. if it comes from me, like even you too, because I know what you can do. You know, 
I just feel like if it's somebody else, say like you know, yeah, I, we're about to do a horror yeah. film, and I got another producer or a writer, creator, or director part of it. I'm like, look, this is the person I want you to work with. You know, like I was pushing for you for Affliction and Luis, and Luis. I don't know what happened with Louis. Louis either didn't respond. He he took a couple of days to respond to me. I'm like, you know, you just messed your opportunity up, bro. I still want to work with him again on something. But, um, you know, with you, it was like, Dom, I'll get it to you. And, you know, of course, I didn't hear back from you. So, we, you know, we like, we got to keep it moving because we're on a time frame. Yeah. But those those videos help because, like, even if you got, like, 30 seconds of something that you've done, just multiple different things that shows your lighting setups. It shows, you know, uh, different different locations, you know what I mean? Like, it could be all music videos, for God's sake, but at least it just shows your range. I think that's what it, it yeah. does for people. Yeah, that's for it's sure. It kind of just yeah. show your range. But, like, if you're locked in and you got a core base, a client base and things like that, you don't need to. Like, there's no point in needing it because I could just show you a video I did based off of what you're trying to want to do. <laughs> yeah, and true. it saves me so much time, you know. Right, that's right. my thing. Like, I didn't spend time on the website. You know, building really? out my website and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, for sure. You want to see my work. Yeah, it's there. Also, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, you got yeah. a website. Like, oh, so that's another thing. So Yeah, like and, my whole website got every single thing I've done. So then. On it, all the brands I've worked with, photography, video, all of it. The whole nine. You know what I mean? My bad, man. I'm trying to get a little video clip of you, man. Mm -hmm. Just showing where we at right now. Um. But yeah, dude, so that's another thing. Like, for some people, that's what they do. They're like, hey, here's my website. You know, and I didn't, for me, I didn't, I wasn't thinking about that at the time. But yeah, dude, I mean, websites, demo reels, like, that works. You know, and for me, I even think about it like, man, should I create a, a demo reel? Then I'm like, man, that's a lot of stuff. Creating that three year video was a lot. You know how many hard drives that I had to, like, plug up to try to find three years of Imperium? And, and it's really like two and a half, but like, that was a lot of the, and a lot of them I couldn't even find the videos. I'm like, well, this, this one put a photo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a photo, it's a photo. You know, <laughs> I ain't even about to even sit here and yeah. play. So, but yeah, man, moving forward. Um, yeah, what's next, man? Yeah, what's dude. Next for Imperium. So, there's a possibility that Imperium would be expanding to Los Angeles. Um, most of that due to the fact of uh, my son having an agent out there now, and you know. We can't. It, it will be way more expensive to try to travel back and forth uh, from Ohio to out there um, than it would be to just live out there already. Mm -hmm. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create a, a team of people here in Ohio that could keep us updated and just with the culture and filmmaking um, while we're out there trying to expand the Columbus culture. Because ideally, man. We say that there's not a market here, which it kind of isn't, you know, mm -hmm. but we can create it. And right. I, I got this strong saying of we create our own luck. Yep. And I truly believe in that wholeheartedly because no one can tell you no. No one can determine your, your level of success or where you can go. No, you can. So you create the opportunities. You can create, um, you know, movies. You can create everything if you have the faith to do it. So... To answer your question, we'll try to focus on um, more thrillers. Uh, I did a, a, a little poll on Instagram and uh, Facebook yesterday or two days ago on what do y'all want to see next? We did crime. We did comedy. We did thriller. We did mystery. What do y'all want else? From, you know, what else do y'all want from us? And um, they said horror. I'm like, I'm like low-key scared because mm -hmm. I don't want to flop. I don't want to be publicly criticized. I don't want, <coughs> you know, I just don't want to fail at that because I don't know right. it. So do you bring in a new, di do you bring in a horror director yeah. and a horror filmmaker yeah. and a horror writer to make that happen? Um, and personally, man, it was cool bringing in other directors and stuff like that, but it's like, is that tough. you? It, like yeah, it, yeah, it's tough. And then it's like, I'm a, di that, you know, my as a businessman, I'm a producer. I'm a film producer. I'm an executive producer. My goal is to find money, and then once we find the money and make the production happen, then my job is to how can I make that back? You know what I'm saying? That's my day-to-day -day job. But my passion, my hobby is a director, writer, editor. You know what I mean? So how do I really truly do a horror film when I told myself that the next few films are just going to be you know, directed by Dom? 
written by Dom, you know. So to answer your question, I don't know what's next. We we created Cyber Tales, which is a uh, animation series, a spinoff from a kid named Bug. Um, and then, you know, we got Tears for Tasha that's about to drop. And every day I'm sitting here thinking, what's next? <laughs> what's next? What's mm -hmm. next? I have over 20 movie outlines. I just finished writing The Female Hustler 3. It's like mm. 112 pages. Um, I wrote a, a mystery called Love, Greed, and Deception. And, and then I got a romance thriller, which is called uh, From Around the Way. So I got a lot of different films that are either uh, fully written or the outlines. And I don't know what to do, man. So, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, kind of bounce some ideas with my peers and maybe create an advisory board to figure out what's going to work and then, you know, kind of go from there. But I would love to, you know, uh, if not the next film, I want to work with y'all, man. Y'all kind of got me. I'm over here inspired. I'm mm -hmm. over here. I see the lights and I see cameras. And I'm like, well, let's, let's make something, you know. So yeah, action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lights, yeah. camera, action. Yeah. Well, let's make it happen, sure. man. Let's make it happen. <coughs> but yeah, man, thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Um, no doubt. For, we appreciate you coming, bro. Yeah, man. Thank y'all so much for this inviting me. Amazing. Can I can I do a quick plug yeah, in? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh man. man, make sure I'm good. Um, so uh, real quick, shout out to my boy Eddie Jackson and my boy Kim Vision for allowing me to come on this um podcast. What's your IG handle? I am Eddie Jackson. No, no, no. Like the the podcast. Directors oh, Den. The directors Den. Podcast. Director's Den podcast. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'll rewind. Shout out my boy Eddie Jackson and Kim Vision and the Director's Den podcast. You guys are amazing. Y'all make sure y'all follow them and y'all stay up to date on what the future episodes may bring. Um, and as far as, as for me, follow us at Imperium Studios. That's E M P E R I U M Studios on all social media networks. If you're interested in casting, if you're interested in crew, if you're just interested in just being a, a supporter or just um, um, a witness to what we're creating, just follow us and check out our movies. They're all on Tubi. You can type in my name, Dom Campbell, or you can check them out. We got Her Way. We got Female Hustler 1. We got Female Hustler 2. We got Temporary Suspicion. We got Affliction, Toxic Misery. And then be on the lookout for Tears for Tasha. And also, if you got kids, you can go to a akidnamebug.com and check out our web series that focuses on education, technology, and um, adventures. So, yeah, shout out to everybody. <coughs> Toast to you guys. Toast to you, man. fellas, man. Um, and check us out. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, so, man, any, uh, any lasting words, bro, you got for people this week, man? Uh, man, just keep up on the grind, time. man. Just, you know, my usual, keep up on the grind. If you got an idea, put it out there. You know what I'm saying? My man, Don Campbell, he's done that. You know, he has it worked the show for it on uh, Tubi. Go check it out. You know, my man E, of course. Go check him out. You know, he has, of course, a million ideas, and he actually executes on them. And I and hey, Gilly, <laughs> Gilly and Wallow took a million dollars worth of game, bro. I'm trying to tell y'all, I, I should have launched the episode back in the day called Million Dollars Worth of Game. Surely yeah, he man. did it, man. Yes, sir. Uh, well, I appreciate both of y'all, man. This has been a great episode. This wine has been a, a good to me. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. Hey, baby. Uh, baby. <laughs> but we appreciate Dom Campbell coming through the director's den, man, today. Y'all make sure y'all go follow him. Make sure you subscribe. <coughs> go to the website. Follow all the films. Go to Tubi. Watch the films, man. Support somebody here in the city, man, that's actually giving people opportunities, giving people just a way out. A way up, right? We talking about elevating and, and never going back. So make sure y'all always go out there and y'all support your next man. Look, listen, it's Eddie Jackson. This is the director's den. Good night. Peace. Good night. Peace.